asking for you in to bloom and we're calling for your fire to fall come and consume us Lord from the inside out we're calling for you in to bloom and we're asking for your fire to fall and come
I hear the Lord say, you become what you behold and you're beholding me. <laughs> you become what you behold and you're beholding me. <laughs> and you look just like me. And you think Thanks, just Jesus. like me. And you see just like me. And you hear just like me. And you love just like me. Because you become what you behold. And you're beholding me. If beholding is 
be coming I'll stay right here just looking at your face I'm gonna stay right here just looking in those eyes I'm gonna stay right here just looking at your hair that's white like wool desire and a fire that yearns for more of God more of God more of God more of God if beholding is becoming Lord I'll never Beholding is becoming I'll stay right here Looking at your face Beautiful face Your beautiful face Your beautiful face Your beautiful face
I have nothing here to hide Cause everything I do is with you in mind You bend down close to me 
Nothing impossible. 
it, you like it. Try it, you like it. Anytime we have worship, any, they're carrying them out. Anytime we have worship, the children are always welcome to come up here and wave the flags and the banners and all that. So it's an open invitation for all the kids uh, to come up here uh, and worship with us. In fact, tomorrow morning, I believe we're having worship early tomorrow morning. Yeah, we're going to be, so come early. It says 10 a.m., but make sure you're here by 9 because we're going to start worship, and we got a lot of great things planned. We're only here one more day. A lot of times we're here on a Sunday as well at a conference, but we're here all day tomorrow, especially we have a lot going on with the kids, a lot of fun things in store. So try to be here by 9 because it's going to be packed out like it is tonight. Uh, it's going to be packed out tomorrow, so come and join us. So uh, how many were here the last time Kevin was in Carlsbad? Well, he kept his word. He came back. <laughs> so, so we're really excited to be here and be a part of all that got, God's doing. I want to mention a couple. I want to mention a couple events that are coming up soon. In March, we're going to have our graduation, our next graduation for our school of ministry in Orlando, Florida. So, yeah, we're really excited about that. Also in March, we're going to be in Austin, Texas. And then in April, it's a really big month for us to be uh, out a lot. Uh, we're going to be doing a one-nighter in Scottsdale, Arizona. And then we're going to go up to uh, Seattle, Washington. And then over the lake to Hawaii. We're going to go back to Hawaii, uh, which, you know, it's a little tiny flight for you guys over here on the West Coast. You can handle it. Come and join us in Honolulu in April. Uh, we're going to do an outreach in Maui, too. It's really on Kevin and Kathy's heart. We were there in Maui last time. We were uh, last year. We were in Maui, and Honolulu, and God's really. We have a really awesome warrior fellowship in Maui. A wonderful, wonderful woman of God, and so we're going to really be investing into Maui with food and just relationship, the fellowship that's there. A really powerful time in Maui. So if you can come over to Honolulu, uh, in Maui with us in April, we'd love to see you there as well. And then, let's see, also uh, one more to mention in May, we're going to be in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oklahoma. So uh, we're, we're just excited about what God's doing and all these wonderful places everywhere we're going. And also, one of the things that I help oversee for Kevin is the Warrior Fellowships. And uh, we have Warrior Fellowships. Like I said, we have a, a really growing, thriving Warrior Fellowship in Maui. And they're all over the world. We have a... Uh, you may not know this, but we have a powerful, powerful fellowship in Uganda. And I am telling you, it is, he emails me on a regular basis, shows me pictures about what God's doing, feeding the poor, helping widows in Uganda. And they don't have a lot, but they're gathering together and say, listen, if they can do it in the States, we can do it in Uganda. And so if they can do it in Uganda, you can do it in California or wherever you're at. Amen. But the testimonies are off the charts. People getting saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, coming off drugs, uh, husband and wives getting back together. With these fellowships, uh, Kevin and Kathy, it, it's a Bible study where if you're a student, you automatically qualify to be a host uh, for a fellowship wherever you live. 
And uh, like I said, they're all over the world, and they, they are designed for a short little Bible study, fellowship, but then doing community outreach. And a lot of these homes have a food pantry in them now for where they're going out and feeding uh, the homeless and giving to widows. And, and, and some of them, Kevin, some of them are literally like, we have so much money we're collecting, what do we do? And we're like, pay rent, do what Kevin's talking about, pay rent for widows, whatever you got to do, just do it. So... Uh, all that to say, for here in California, we have some leaders of fellowships here. There's some in Carlsbad. They're around. Uh, we, uh, there's one, uh, I believe, in San Diego. But if you're a leader, first of all, if you're a host or a leader, raise your hand. Okay, we have several. So you leaders, make sure that you go back in the back. Uh, some, uh, I, don't, I haven't met her yet, a wonderful uh, lady. She set up a table back there for fellowships. Now, there's a lot of people here. We could take over California just for what's in this room. So if, you, if you're a fellowship leader, please go sign your name in the back in where you live. And then if you look at that, if you're not involved with a fellowship, go back there and look at where these fellowships are, what city they're in. Put your email address in there. There's no commitment, but we need to keep gathering together as brothers and sisters to do the work of the Lord that God has called us to. Amen. Well, we're really excited about that. We're also excited about receiving an offering uh, this evening. Yeah. We, uh, uh, like I said last night in uh, Albuquerque, this is a no arm twisting, no uh, compulsion zone. Uh, and if you follow Kevin at all, how many watch Kevin and Kathy on YouTube? Or uh, then You know what I'm about to say. Uh, you don't have to give. And uh, even if you didn't give the last time Kevin came to Carlsbad, he came again. And that's just the way he operates. And so, uh, but we do always want to give everybody opportunity to sow. We believe it's a kingdom principle. But like the Bible says, and like Paul said, you know, we believe that you've already determined in your heart what you were going to give before you even came here. So you know how we do things here. So thank you. Thank you for being a part. Thank you for giving in the offering. Thank you for being a part of this ministry. And Pastor Michael, talk to you a little bit more about that. If you want to do text to give, the number is on the screen right now if you're watching. Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord, to just uh, come to Carlsbad, California, Lord, and to be a part of the kingdom of heaven moving forward, Lord, taking nations, Lord, helping widows and orphans, Lord, and doing the things that you've called us to do, Lord. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Ushers, thank you. Pastor Chris. All right, Carlsbad. I have some exciting news. Warrior Pantry is on the ground here in Carlsbad, California. All right? And if you don't know what Warrior Pantry is, I'm about to tell you, so just hold on. It's always on Kevin and Kathy's heart to come into a city, not only do all the things that they do and, and for the kids and the worship, but it's always on their heart to give back to the community. So tomorrow morning at 8 a.m., I need all the Warrior Fellowships, all the Warrior students, at 8 a.m., we're going to meet in the hallway there, and we're going to package up 150 bags of groceries, okay, for the community. Now, listen, the groceries are for single moms. Maybe you're a single mom here, and you're, you, know, you know what? I could use some groceries. A single dad, we're not going to forget about single dads. Or you're a veteran, or you're just going through a real difficult time right now. These groceries are first for you. And then we are going to take the groceries, you are, we're going to package them up, and then we're going to, you're going to take the, the uh, groceries, and we're going to give it out to the community. Now, listen up, Warrior Fellowship Groups. If you're already doing things, uh, you know, in the community, we definitely want you to grab those bags, take them back to your Warrior Fellowship, pray over them. We're going to pray over them, uh, but then give them out. You're maybe already on your mind. You're like, you know what? I have a neighbor. There's a guy I've been witness to about the Lord. I've been telling him that God's good. Those are the kind of things we want you to do, and those, are the, those groceries are for those people as well. 150, yep. So, Dr. Kevin, I haven't even got to tell yet, and Kathy, I have had people coming up to me and saying, Pastor Chris, we're hitting the streets. We're going to the homeless. We're going to, and I want to tell you, I am so blessed by you guys. Yes, give your hands a, yes, clap. That's awesome. That's what it's all about, right? Everybody has a circle of influence in their life. And that's what we're asking. Warrior Fellowships, students, begin to look around and say, who can I help? Maybe it's a neighbor. Maybe it's a coworker. One of the things we do at our Warrior Fellowship 
and I always talk about, and I love talking about it, is Friday nights, we have these little wagons and these little coolers, and we take these hot dogs, we cook these hot dogs, and we put chili in them, and in the hot dogs, and we wrap them up in aluminum foil, and we put in these coolers, we get blankets, we get beanies, we get hats, we get hand warmers, and we go into the uptown area, and we just take this wagon, and we just start rolling this wagon around. And people start coming up and saying, what are you doing? And like, hey, we're just here sharing the love of Jesus. And Dr. Kevin, one thing I've learned, it always comes down to people just want to be heard. People just want to know that they're valued and they're loved by God. That's what it comes down to. And I was sitting over there a minute ago, and I was thinking, you know what, with Warrior Fellowships, Warrior students, you could do whatever, right? You could go into a nursing home. Your Warrior Fellowship group says, you know what? Let's pick a nursing home. We go in. Let's sing songs. Let's play games. Let's talk about Jesus. Let's pray for people. I want to tell you, I've done nursing home ministry before, and it's awesome to sit with a 90-year-old and hear the stories of how God moved in their church and how their granddaughter was saved and hit by the power of God. I want to tell you, you could do that. I thought of one a minute ago. What if we started a warrior checkout, right? You go to Walmart, you hang around the checkout, you see it. I'm serious. I thought about that. It's like, you know what? This is cool. Warrior checkout. You go to Walmart, right? You go to the checkout aisle and you wait for a single mom to come with her kids full of groceries. And you walk up and say, ma'am, I don't know how you're doing it. I am so inspired by you. And I just want to tell you that you are valued and you are loved and you are doing an awesome job. And you know what? God has put it on my heart that I want to pay for your groceries today. Amen. Could you imagine that, that mom or that dad, they will never forget that. So I like that. Warrior checkout, right? Hey, start, somebody start Warrior checkout. We can do that. Amen. <laughs> There's all kind of cool things you can do. And like I said, we, we go to the streets. We, we minister to the homeless. Uh, we minister to the gang members, all kind of stuff. I just love it. I'll tell you a quick little testimony. And I feel the power of God. I know Kevin's ready to go. Yes. We had these guys, and we were, we were working with some homeless people, and these guys came up. One guy, he was smoking, blowing in my face, and I said, yes, I love it when people just blow smoke in my face. I was like, I'm exactly, the devil doesn't want me here, so I'm, I just planned it down. Another guy was drinking, he was drunk, he's like, yeah, pray for me, man. I said, well, I just want to tell you, if I pray for you, God's going to touch you. Oh, yeah, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I said, okay. I said, can I pray for you? He goes, yeah. I prayed for him. This is no lie. I prayed for him. He got hit by the power of God. He was drunk, okay? He got hit by the power of God, and he goes, what'd you do to me? I said, what do you mean? He goes, I'm sober. I said, the power of God has touched you. I said, because you are valuing your life. Listen, this is funny. Hey, I'm just doing what I've heard Kevin and Kathy tell me to do. The funniest thing, though, I look over his friend, the one that's blowing smoke on our face. The guy, you know, I pray for the other guy. He got hit by the power of God. I said, what'd you do to me? I said, just God touched you. And he took off. He ran. So I looked at his friend, and I said, how about you? Do you want prayer? And he goes, no, I'm good. I'm good. I don't want prayer. But listen, we can all do something, right? I, I saw so many Warrior Fellowships, so many students, and the people just coming up to me and saying, Chris, Pastor Chris, we're hitting the streets. Pastor Chris, we're going out to the homeless. That's what it's about. Everybody can do something. Amen? These are just little ideas. So if you start Warrior Checkout, let me know. And I want you also, please share your stories, share your testimonies. On Warrior Chat, I started a little hashtag, uh, hashtag Warrior Pantry, hashtag Warrior Outreach. If you do something, please put some pictures and put hashtag you know, Warrior Pantry, hashtag Warrior Outreach. And when you click it, you can see all the different testimonies that people are doing. Amen? We can do this. We can bring in the harvest. <laughs> Pastor Mike. Wow. I feel like I've already been through a whole weekend conference. This is amazing. So just so you guys know, Pastor Chris, we had an outreach at our, our church where we were doing back to school stuff. This guy went to Walmart, went to... <laughs> Imagine this, okay? He's, he went to the aisles where they had all the kid supplies, and he's telling the people, no, 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 don't buy that. Don't buy that. Come to our church. We're going to give it all to you. We literally had like two families join our church because Chris was telling them how to get free pencils and come get a hot dog and let us love on your kids because he's willing to do it. It's amazing when you say yes, what God will do with you. Isn't that awesome? That was free for you. So I'm so excited. I'm Pastor Mike, and we have been so looking forward to spending time with our family here in California. And here we are. 
I know you guys are some crazy believers, and that's good because uh, we got Dr. Kevin tonight, and he's going to make sure you don't go home empty-handed spiritually, spiritually. Don't just take everything. But we're so excited that you guys have come, and we're believing for an impartation. We're believing that this state, this city, and that you will never be the same because heaven's moving, and it's about time we catch up with it, right? So there's a few things I want to share with you guys. Um, before I do that, though, let me, get, let me see some hands. How many partners and students do we have here tonight? Wow. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Listen, all over the world, the gospel is being preached. Lives are being transformed. And it's because we're in this together. We're a family. We're partnering. We're fellowshipping together. And we're reaching our community. So thank you, everybody that's coming. Thank you to all the partners, all the students that have been behind Kevin and Kathy and that maybe are just learning about them. But the mission is this, is that we bring Jesus and we transform this generation. That's the mission here at Warrior Notes. And so Kevin and Kathy's heart is to equip you. Okay, everybody say quip. All right, so to get equipped, you need tools, you need supplies, you need training, right? And that's what Warrior Notes School Ministry is. Now, if you are not a student, we've been wondering where you've been. We've got plenty of room for you. we got a seat at the table for you. But Dr. Kevin's school is a fully accredited college. We just finished up our bachelor's degree, and we're on our way to our master's and doctorate program this year. Now, let me tell you this. This has been only a few years, and we're over 32,000 students all over the world, and it is not slowing down. Matter of fact, we're just, we're just trying to, you know, hold, keep our hands on the steering wheel because y'all are hungry. Can I say y'all? Is that okay? Sorry, a little, little Carolina for me. I apologize. But you guys are hungry, and so Dr. Kevin has been filming and filming, and so this weekend to go with this weekend. And we have, of course, how many of you got your free study guide? No cost, you got your CD. But to go with it, with break for uh, Breakthrough to Overthrow, Dr. Kevin has five brand new courses on this. Now, he, so we had one and two out, but he said, they're hungry, I'm gonna give them more. So we had level three, four, five, six, and seven come out on presale today. Now. How many of you have ever, if you've gone to college, you know that it's not cheap, okay? It's not cheap, right? Well, not with Dr. Kevin. He makes everything affordable. And right now, we are having just an unprecedented sale called, um, what did we call it? The finish line. <laughs> the finish line, thank you. <laughs> the anointing will make you a little messy sometimes. But this sale right now, he literally has the entire school on a half price, buy one, get whatever you want, free sale. And it's all because what he saw in the spirit was he saw people that were trying to cross the finish line and they just needed a little help. And so his heart is that everybody crosses their finish line. Everybody makes it. Everybody does what they've been called to do. So if you're new to Warrior Notes or to Kevin or Warrior Notes School Ministry, please um, check us out at the book table because... Our goal is to equip the body, and that takes training. And he's set up this school where you can earn your degree, you can get equipped, and you can do what you've been called to do. Amen? Amen. A couple other things. Now, this weekend, we're recording everything because we're going to have a Live in California CD come out. You like that? So we just got done live from Nashville, and it is fire. Say fire. It's fire, okay? But we've got everything back there. We want you to grab some music because you need to be playing in your car. You need to be playing it. Listen, if you're a teacher, you need to be playing it in your classroom. If you're an owner, you need to be playing it at your work. If you're a doctor, be playing it in your waiting room. You want the glory to get everywhere. So don't hold back because, listen, the devil ain't holding back. So why are you holding back, okay? Stop holding back. It's not worth it. Now, in the, in the process of equipping and training, his heart was to start with the children. That's why we have the Sims. That's why we have, so, listen, there's so much coming out this year. I, my head is spinning between flight and kids programming, all these amazing things. And we know so many people have been asking. And let me tell you, it's, it's all coming. It's all coming. It's going to be more than you can handle. So just eat your Wheaties, okay? But... <laughs> This weekend is for the kids as well as for everybody else. And one important thing that is for the kids that Kevin had a mandate from the Lord was homeschooling. Yeah. 
okay? Because we all know this, that if we can equip and our, train our children the identity of Jesus Christ and excellence and education, we can transform a generation, okay? Because we know that, listen, all of us adults, we're out there, we're doing it, we're going after God. But could you imagine if you had a foundation that you could build your life off of like we could give our children right now? So, Miss Lauren's been standing here, but we now have kindergarten, first grade, and second grade out. We're working all the way. We're going all the way through high school. So you can start with kindergarten and end with your doctorate all at Warrior Note School of Ministry. That's their vision. Isn't that amazing? All right. So I'm going to let Miss Lauren talk for a minute. She's going to say something amazing. <laughs> so I'll tee her up a little bit better. I'll tee her up. So Miss Lauren is our registrar for Warrior Note School of Ministry, and she's been a phenomenal help to us. And she is British, so we like to let her share her British accent with you just a little bit. But she's just learning to do this, and that's all you get. Okay, last switch because I can't do it. Okay. Hi, I am Lauren. I am a part of Warrior Note School of Ministry, as you just said. If you have any questions, graduation courses, anything school related, then please come find myself or Becca if you've heard of her. We'll be in the background somewhere. Um, yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Lauren. So we have everything here, we have all the kits. And if you're new to homeschooling, we have a whole community of homeschool parents that are on Warrior Chat. And in case you didn't know it, we have two apps. We have the Warrior Chat app and we have the Warrior TV app, where, by the way, all the exclusive shows that Kevin's been filming that's not on YouTube are on there for our partners. So you need to partner because that's some good stuff. But we have everything here. And the last thing I'm going to say before I give it to the boss is their brand new book, Effective Prayer. We have it. And uh, let me tell you, number it's already hit number one. It's, it's amazing, okay? So we have everything here. We want you to grab everything you need because God's going to do an amazing work in your life, and it's time to be equipped. Amen? Amen. Dr. Kevin Zadai. Good job. <laughs> wow. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we love. Oh, we love you. We we are so happy to be here. You have no idea. At Christmas time, when the Lord said you're going back to Carlsbad, I mean, it was Christmas. I think it was like Christmas Eve. I was so happy. I was so happy. I I, I called. I called Ryan. And I said, we got it. we're going back to Carlsbad. And I, I said, get the truck ready, get everything ready, we're going back. I mean, I was so happy. Okay, so um, there's a lot of things going on. I, um, I, I did something really bad. I didn't rest over my Christmas vacation. <laughs> I didn't rest. I, I, the minute I sat still and I started hearing from God, I started moving again. <laughs> God started to touch me because I stopped because I was supposed to have five weeks off and I had um, five hours off instead. <laughs> but the, the, thing, the thing about the Lord is, is that he's always going to keep moving on people and it, it's really up to us, but we, we just don't, haven't been taught that. We've been taught to wait on God and it's, um, it's not been healthy. It's been good for a season and it's a, t and a, time, a time that is not now. <laughs> um, we are so behind the curve that we're about, to, we're about to lose the sweet spot in this generation. And then the Lord had said that this will be a prophetic word here in California. And he said that, that I was so, to announce it here, and that's why I'm coming here, is that the church, the church has never been in a better place to do something historical than right this moment, right now. And he wants me to announce it in California. And um, the reason why it's California is because um, he showed me the, the angels, the angels that came and, and influenced California. There was a time where the angels came to California 
And they even called a city, the city of angels. Yes. That, that, is so, that is so what's happening right now. There are so many angels in California right now. There's so much happening right now. And it's like Mount Sinai. It's literally like Mount Sinai right here in this room right now. And, and I'm not just saying that. I'm not being pathetic. I'm being prophetic. I'm telling you the truth is God is moving, but he wants us to announce it this weekend, what he's doing. And the church has never been in a better place right now. Now you might not think now if you would, uh, if we would go through an audit, we would be lukewarm at best. Okay. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the opportunity that, that everybody in the next generation writes books about how we missed it. And the Lord, the Lord, when I wrote, I wrote that book on the agenda of angels, he told me the reason you're writing this book, he says, because I don't want the next generation talking about how we missed it. You know, next generation will be books out and they'll look back and they'll talk about us like they talked about all these other moves of God and how it dwindled or whatever, you know, and I just don't want to be a casualty. I mean, it, it's on our watch. We can do something about it. All of us can do this together, but that's been the thing is there's a bunch, uh, not a bunch, there's a couple of superheroes out there. And what we need is the body of Christ. We, we don't need just superheroes because then everybody just sits back and lets them do everything. But that's not how it works here, earthlings. So, and you don't have to say, take me to your leader because you already know who your leader is. It's Jesus Christ. So anyway, all right. So this is what happened over, over uh, the Christmas week. It started with the Lord stirring me about Enoch. And I, I told, I told um, some individuals, I gotta, I gotta speak this, I gotta write this book, I gotta do this course, I gotta do these CDs. And it's right smack in the middle of, all, of my rest. And so I, I did, I did the course, I filmed the course, I did a six CD set on it. And um, then I did a study guide and we, we had a conference on it uh, just recently in Jacksonville. And, and what, 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 is, what was spoken to me and what's happening in California is people, people are gonna start to walk like Enoch walked. But this is, this is something that I usually don't share because people freak out and they don't wanna be my friend anymore. But there are times when I don't know what, what I'm, is happening, if it is a dream or if it's really happening because I can see in my dreams, I see the future play out exactly as it's gonna happen. And then I walk into it and it happens again. And then I can't tell if I'm, if which, is, which one was right because they're both the same. The future seems like it's now sometimes. So I can't remember if I was told this, if this happened or if it's going to happen at times. And this is when the Lord said this at Christmas time to me, welcome to Enoch. This is how Enoch walked. Enoch didn't discern now. The reason he was such a great man of faith was because he received the future now, because he actually saw it before it happened. Now, I don't even know if you understand what I just said. So this year, starting with you all, there's a letting go. There's a releasing of everything that's held you back. Like it says in Hebrews, the sin that so easily entangles you. And you let go of that. And you run your race as though this is the last lap. And this is what Enoch learned, but he was 65. He just started getting social security and he started to walk with God. And he walked with God 300 years. And Social Security had to pay for it. No, no, no. All right, so the assignment this weekend is literally to shake the heavenlies yeah. over California. But it will go across the nation. Now, and, and, you know, and I started in Jacksonville, and we took out the head honcho there. Yes. I mean, it was, shake, I mean, it was, you asked my staff, it was bizarre. The spirits of that, of that city were shaken And it was blind, they were blindsided because that was not on our map. And the Lord said, you're going to Jacksonville. 
And he said, it's more for what's going on spiritually in the heavenlies over Jacksonville. But I didn't discern it in my own mind or, or anything. So I, I didn't understand why I was being sent there. Then people started to say things. Well, you know, our city is a, a sanctuary city. It's this, it's this. Did you know this? And I'm like, no, I didn't know any of that. So then I thought, okay. Then, then we're going to Carlsbad, and he goes, you're going to talk about Enoch there too, but you're going to talk about um, the relationship that he had and how he is noted as one who pleased God and how he literally was a prophet that prophesied. He was the seventh from Adam. And Jude says he prophesied. And, and Jude quotes him from his book that was taken out of the writings because Jesus quoted the book of Enoch a lot you just don't know it but if you do your study students you'll find this out there are certain things that Jesus said that are only in the book of Enoch like the weeping and gnashing of teeth that's only that verbiage is only in the book of Enoch I could go on and on and on but I'm not here to promote a book that's not in the Bible right now but but there are lots of books that are referred to like the book of Jasher is referred to in the Bible but it's not in the Bible Okay, I'm not here to promote those kind of books and saying anything about that. They're available, you have a free will. Even though you live in California, you are free. Amen. So, and this is a beautiful state. And you have to remember the heritage that's here. God sent angels to where there are so many angels that they called it the city of angels. You gotta remember that. There's a heritage in California, it's a beautiful state, and the the devil um, the devil's not going to get it. No. Not on our watch, right? Okay, all right. So the e Enoch is very important because Enoch is a type of the church, and the reason why he is a type of the church is because Paul, the verbiage that's used in Hebrews talking about him being taken is the same verbiage that Paul uses in Thessalonians, talking about us being caught up, taken. It's the same exact verbiage, the catching away. So Paul started this. Perry Stone didn't start this. <laughs> so we, we've attached different words to it, which aren't in the original. But if you go and just use the Bible to confirm the Bible, it's, it's what happened to Enoch. that He pleased God so much that God found him irresistible and took him as though he snatched him for marriage. And that's what the church, you know, that's the teaching that Paul talks about and Jesus talks about, about the catching away and the preparation of the bride and the, the, the church. And the, the gates of hell can't prevail against her. The body of Christ, the, the bride without spot and wrinkle, all those different phrases. It has to do with this idea of that being engaged for a year and suddenly the groom comes as a thief in the night and take, it comes. So you had to be ready at any moment for, during that next year. And that was the whole idea of the wedding and you know the Jewish the Jewish culture God used that and that's that's why I'm here this weekend is in order to get ready for this this time that we're at, we're already in we have to own it the only way that we can own it is there's a couple things that have to be reconciled someone has to stand up and say it's not working the way we're doing it Someone's got to be honest and say, it's not working. Let's reevaluate this. Let's be mature adults and sit down and say, reevaluate how we're approaching things. And, and what, what, I, what I noticed is, is that the more I learned about ministry, the more I didn't want to be involved with it. And I would rather just be in the marketplace and work for a company like I did. And Kathy, she had her own business. And we were fine with just praying for people and, and loving on people. And we would just, you know, we would pay people's cars off. And, uh, and we would help people with financially, and we would just work extra. And, you know, we would even travel and pay for our own way. We bought our first cameras, you know, for, for TV, 
you know, out of our own paychecks. We, we just, we worked for free at church. We were full-time staff sometimes for free. We never, we never got paid. We were there more than the pastor was. And we worked full-time jobs. And we wanted to do it, but we didn't want to get paid. We didn't want that brag taken away from us. We didn't want that reward stolen from us. We didn't want to be paid. We worked extra hard so that we could compensate for the fact that we'd have to take a week off to work at a church. Okay? So, so that's what this is birthed out of, is we have to say, if it's not working, and if people don't want to be involved with a church anymore, we ought to just sit down and talk about it and find out what's really going on. But, but because I had studied and because now we have the, the university and I'm teaching these things, what I found was shocking. You know what we learn about history? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. And it's a cycle that repeats itself. And, and in the, the, the people that are mature and seniors, they see it circle back around and they sit there and grit their teeth. And you know what we do to them? We send them away. We send them away into retirement, and, and what do they know? And the thing that is, is they know exactly, they're like prophets. They can tell you exactly what's going to happen next, because they've seen it play out before. So what we do is we don't value people that are mature and elderly that have already been through this. It's, everything's a cycle, because the demonic doesn't have a plan B. And that's what you got to remember about demons. They don't have a, a, another plan. If you resist them, if you push them back, that's what that word, it means to resist arrest. That word in Greek, when you resist the devil, when you submit to God and you resist the devil, he flees from you. It's the same word that's used if that God resists the proud. He pushes you back. God pushes back the proud. That's, that could be you. I hope it's not you. Because you're wasting a lot of our time, too, because we're all tied together. God resists the proud. He pushes back. It's like resisting arrest. All right? So if you resist the devil, if you push him back, he will flee from you. You submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Why? Because he does not have a plan B. Evil spirits are not used to Christians resisting to the point where they stand up and they say, no, not on my watch. We're not going to do it that way. We're going to, you know, I'm going to have, I'm going to have 12 people at Christmas and we're not going to wear anything on our face and we're going to sing. I'm going to have 12 people in my house and I'm going to sing. Oh, I can't believe you're saying that. I don't know if you know what just happened to you. But this is the Antichrist trying to test the borders to see if you're, gonna, if you're going to do anything about it. But you have. You have. You passed your test. You're here. All right. But now, what do we do with what we learned? Because the devil's not going to just sit back. I mean, there's going to be balloons coming from China. And they're going to use a million dollar missile to shoot it down when I could have just shot it down with my 50 caliber. The pilot could have opened the canopy and threw a BB at it. And saved us all those tax dollars. They didn't even arm it. It was not even armed. It just went through it. Okay. When are you going to realize you got to knock, knock off the macaroni and cheese? You're being lulled to sleep by what you eat, what, what, you, what you hear. It's time. It's time to sit down at the table and say, listen, who's brave enough to say what's going on is not right and it's not working the way, the way that it's being done? We have to be yeah. mature. We have to bring in the seniors, the ones who have seen this before who have been in, in countries where they've watched this happen. They know the next step. They know exactly the game plan. Okay, so Enoch was in that time. And I'm not going to talk about Enoch that much this weekend. I'm just I'm doing my introduction here because this has happened at Christmas for me. Is I saw that Enoch lived in a time where it was worse than it is now. The, the 
the powers that be had already genetically altered human beings. It was no longer in the test phase like now. It was already done. And God had to destroy the earth because of interbreeding. And, and Enoch was a prophet, and Noah was a prophet, and he had to preach righteousness in a time where those people, they were beyond the 50% human being mark, which means they are not redeemable by Jesus Christ. Jesus came as a pure human being, a spotless, genetically spotless. Noah was, it says, perfect in his genetics, perfect in his generations, in his bloodlines. Perfect. I mean, no, no hybrid. No lizard boy had gotten in. No Barney DNA. Think about it. The whole earth had to be, only eight people made it. Only eight people had took zinc and vitamin D. No, think about it. I mean, if you, do you want to wait 75 years to find out? Yeah, Siri's even like, I'll check it up for you. <laughs> I'm checking right now. Siri, you know what? Just go ahead and show yourself out. Take the night off, Siri. I want Siri and Alexa to get into a cat fight. Maybe half our world's problems will be resolved. Okay, all right. So Enoch walked with God and then he was not because it was known that he had great faith. But it, it says here that he pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Well, the, the Hebrew word for faith, not the word of faith, not the word of faith, I can't, all my friends are watching, they're gonna hate me. <laughs> now listen to me. The definition of faith is in the Hebrew word for faith, which is the word trust. So Abraham trusted God. Why? Because him and God had a track record. God came to him and said, leave your nation, leave your area, and when you get to where, where I'm sending you, I'll tell you. That's how it was. When Jesus walked by the, 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 the fishermen that were going to be disciples in 30 seconds, he said, come follow me. And they left everything. Honey, I won't be home for dinner tonight. <laughs> you got to remember, this is the way. So that, because when everybody left Jesus, he said, you got to drink my blood or eat my flesh. You have no part of me. It says everyone left him and he turned to his disciples who were standing there shocked. And he goes, are you going to leave me too? And he said, well, where would we go? In other words, they left their jobs. And he, they said this, you have the words of life. Okay, so their faith was based on his words but they were life. So there is no real knowledge unless it's experiential. And that'll make me a lot of friends not. Now think about it. What good is knowledge if it's not applicable? What good is it to acquire knowledge if, you, if you're gonna sit there and freeze up and kill yourself and others? If you're, not, if you're gonna drop the ball when it's your turn to shine, is it really knowledge? Okay, is it, is it the right kind of knowledge? Experiential knowledge is when you, when you trust something or someone enough to you, you have a track record with them. It's a relationship. So it's not an ATM. It's, it's, not, it's not a slot machine where you put something into it and you get something out. God is not a slot machine. God is not an ATM. He's a person that's, that's, that gets hurt. He sent Jesus back after he sent Paul. Jesus was on the earth. Paul came. So you got 30 AD, 60 AD, 90 AD, 
Isle of Patmos, Jesus comes back again to John and says, you're lukewarm. Not very many years had passed. They had Paul, they had Jesus, and now they have Jesus again, and they had done nothing in the amount of years. So they had not attached themselves, listen to me, they had not attached themselves to Jesus' words to where it was experiential because they had not increased their temperature. So all that was, was going on at the time, the persecution, it caused them to back off. And that's what's happening right now. That's what's happening in this nation. That's what's happening in the world. Christians are beginning to back off at a time where it's time to shine. And that it's a tipping point. And that is why I believe I was sent back for this weekend. Is because it's time. It's time for us to arise and please God. And without faith or without trust or experiential knowledge, without encountering the knowledge of God. We cannot please God. Be because God is a person. He can't show up and nothing happen. He could show up and not say a word. And this, is, this would be against, think about the mentality we have with, with all these movements, like a word of faith. God could show up and not say a word. And stuff would start happening. He wouldn't have to say a word. Why? Because he is the word. Okay? But we get to the place where we got to say something. Or we got to give something. we got to do something. What about receiving? What about being a receiver? Do you always have to be a giver? What about being a good receiver? Can you handle somebody giving something to you? Can you handle somebody paying your house off? Yes, I can. Yeah, see? You have to start thinking out of the box because God is out of the box. He will never be put in a box. The minute you put him in the box, he's outside the box. And he's going to say, what you doing? What you doing? And this is what the Pharisees did. Pharisees had it all boxed up. And Jesus said, you brood of vipers. You sons of Satan, he said. He said, you're, you know, when you speak, you, you remind me of your father, the devil. You, you're a liar just like he was. He, that's the head denomination of the day. Can you imagine saying that to the Catholic Church? That's what Jesus did. He spoke against the leading authority. The watchmen, the ones that were supposed to be waiting to announce the coming of the Messiah. Were they at the manger? No, but the... Uh, the Magi showed up. The shepherds showed up. The Magi were magicians. Magi is short for magicians. Put that in your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> so they came because of the star, not because of the word of God. They, became, they came because of a star that showed up. Okay, come on. So they were notified. The shepherds were notified. If you watch a little drummer boy, even the animals were notified, you know. <laughs> But where are the Pharisees? Where's the denomination of the day? That's where we're at right now. Making friends all over. I bet I have so many friend requests right now. No, no, but think about it. Think about it. All of you are supposed to be doing this. All of you are supposed to be being vocal about who your God is. Your trust in God. You don't have to manipulate him to do something. He wants to do it, but he's going to do it his way. So if you've made a box for him, he's not going to use it. What you doing? God has said that to me. What you doing? I said, I'm going to go speak. He goes, I didn't tell you to go there. I get, he he goes, I am the door. Jesus appeared to me. I wasn't allowed to share this on some TV programs because it, to, to them, they have a frame of how Jesus is. He sits down, has tea with you, and he wants to do anything you want. And he's like, what do you want to do today? You know, that kind of thing, to have, drink tea and, um, you know, watch your favorite TV show, whatever. You know, go to your favorite ball game. And he's not like that at all. And so he appeared to me. 
I mean, he was flat out just as clear as all of you were. He's done this many, many times that I don't share about because it's a side of him that most people will, will, will encounter. You'll encounter this side of him, but you don't want to. You're going you're gonna to cross the line with him and you're going to know it. And he's not going to be in the mood for tea. That's the truth, okay? But how many people will stand up and say this? Because, you know, and they'll, th- that's why they take the offering first. <laughs> and you're free to leave now, you know? <laughs> I'm making you laugh because it's true. But we got to stop this. We got to stop all this. Okay, so where do I go from here? I'm waiting on the Holy Spirit. Because Jesus appeared to me and said this. He said, he said, I am the door. And I said, yes, you said that in John. And he was upset. My, Kathy was asleep, so she missed the whole thing. <laughs> he said, you don't understand. You don't go anywhere on this earth unless it's through me. And he turned around and walked away. He was mad. He was upset with me. And I had gotten my first speaking engagement and I just accepted it because Kenneth Hagin in school said, as a young minister, if you get asked to speak, take it. And in my case, it was wrong. Another time, he appeared to me. And he pointed at me. The foot of the bed, the same spot. Kathy was asleep. Well, actually, Kathy wasn't there. That was the time where the Lord told me to fly up there to our other house in Seattle. And don't worry, I wasn't in the ministry, so we had two houses, and we actually worked for it. It wasn't offerings or anything. But the Lord said, you go up and you sleep in that bed. So I flew up there, slept in that bed, so that he could appear to me. In the same spot again. And this is what he said. He said, don't find yourself on the wrong side of me. So, you know, you know, do you think that's going to sell a book on Sid Roth? <laughs> no, no, I'm, 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 you know, I'm joking, but I'm not joking. If you notice, I backed off of a lot of people and a lot of, a lot of things. And the reason why is, is I don't like, I don't like not telling people what they need to hear. Amen. Sometimes you just need to eat your vegetables. And so I, I, I don't like peas. But it's because my mom fed me the canned peas. Now that I found out the bird's eye is actually these really, they're actually green. They're actually green. I mean, real nice, healthy. They haven't been sitting in a can for a year. And I, I couldn't believe how good they are. But I used to have to eat those peas, but they were, they were faded green. They looked like avocado, avocado green, you know? They weren't like the real green and they were in a can. And so I would eat them first so it wouldn't spoil my meal. I would eat them first because I had to eat my peas and then I would eat my food because I wanted to walk away from the table with a memory, <laughs> a good memory, <laughs> because to me, eating is an experience. I don't, I don't eat to live. I eat for an experience because it's like a language, like, like taste and food is a, is a language to me. But I, 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 I can have a little bit and enjoy it, but I like flavor. So I like little flavors in, in that. Okay, it's the same with people. Jesus told me his best times on earth were sitting at a table with his disciples, talking. It flipped me out because I thought, you know, his, you know, he had a ministry and he had all this responsibility and he's doing all this thing. He's, you know, doing miracles and, and feeding people and, you know, he's out and about fighting the Pharisees and everything. And you know, he'd go up in the mountains at night. He hardly slept at all because he only had three and a half years of ministry. So he, he just pushed it to the limit. So he only had three and a half years. So he would pray all night. Then he would walk on the water during the day to the boat. And then, <laughs> and then he would preach, you know. And he would do all this stuff. And it was just, but he told me that, that he, he enjoyed sitting with his disciples and talking. He loved that communion, that fellowship. And that's how I am. I, I mean, I, I say this all the time. I'd rather just sit with you all and just talk and because I'm just Kevin. I don't, I don't want to do what I'm doing because I feel like it's not as intimate, but I have to do this. So I'm doing this for him. But what I really want to do is just sit and talk with you and just hear what, what's the Lord's 
saying to you and, and build each other up. So that's why we have Warrior Notes. Is I want to make it like a family thing. We're all connected. And then that way we can all have contact with each other so that no matter what we need all over the world, we're, we're going to be able to get it. We'll find out if there's anybody near you and get you water, food, whatever you want, or, or a box of patients if you live in, in California. You need patients, you know, you wear out. Yeah. I mean, everything's complicated. I mean, everything's, I mean, even flying in here. You know, there's 14 le steps down just to get into this airport. 14 steps. It's like, can you just like send us the whole way in? You know, no, they got to like slow down, speed up, turn right, turn left. And I'm like, I feel like I'm in class. And so even Spence one day goes, you know, can we just um, do this? He goes, you know, there's other people up here besides you. That's what the controller said. <laughs> You know, there's other people up here beside you. Like, yes, we're well aware of that. But do we have to do like sky writing in the sky while we do it? You know, or can we just like, you know, but that's the way it is. It's very like, it's very complicated and very busy and very congested. Okay, with, with that complicity, it, it, it's, um, it makes things less enjoyable if you're not up to it. Okay, so ministry became complicated pretty much after Jesus left. It, did, it, it changed right away, just a couple years, because uh, Paul came, Paul did what he did. He had this revelation that nobody else had had. The mystery was revealed. He said it's been hidden in times past, but now it's been revealed. So he reveals it. Okay, but I've sat through seminars with prophets who say, you know, I'm going to reveal a mystery this weekend. I'm like, well, all the mysteries are revealed, buddy. Can I have my money back? <laughs> you charge 99 bucks. So that's why I give out everything. I literally give it out because I, I, I'm just done. If God can't do this, then I'll just stay home. And when you have that attitude, you wouldn't believe all the miracles that happen every day. We just got to do the flip. You got to get into trust. You got to get into a relationship with God where he cannot fail, which means I'm with him. You're not going to fail. You say, I'm with him. So I always defer. I never want to be the man in charge. I want to be the second in command. Because then you can just say, well, I'm with him. I was just doing what I was told. I never want to be a head pastor. I always want to be assistant pastor. Pastor got sniped all the time. I, I was behind him. I didn't get hit. <laughs> so Jesus has to take the hits, which he already has. Okay? All right. So Enoch is that type of the church in the last day. So when I was shown this, no one else had ever said that. And I thought, well, you know, how do we, how do we fix something? And this is how you fix it. You start over again. You go back to house churches. And that goes over really well. But see, this is what happened. In the, in the beginning, there were no buildings. There were no places for people to meet. They met in their homes. James, James was one of the first pastors that had a bigger church in Jerusalem. But his book almost didn't make it into the Bible because he was so hard. If you read the book of James, I just want you to know that it didn't make it the first two tries into the Bible. Did you know that? Did you know that Jude almost didn't make it? Because Jude mentions Enoch. And James was really tough because he said, you know what? You talk about your faith, you word of faith people, show me. Well, that went over well. So James, James was like rubber meets the road kind of guy. So you, you think you want James to do this weekend? You better wish that I stay. Because, because James and Jesus and all these people, Paul, he, he mean, Paul was like, am I coming to you with a whip or am I going to come to you as a friend? You know, you, he says, you make the decision, let me know. And then he says, you go ahead and take the offering before I come. Now, what minister is going to do that? All of you 
are in the balance and all of you are on a platform of promotion right now, period, period, that's it. And, and it, it's never gonna be better than right now. But just so you know, if you don't act now and you don't recover from this tailspin, it is unrecoverable at a certain point. I just want you to know, there will come a point where Satan will be allowed to have his way because the church did not rise up and agree as touching this one thing. We did not get together and agree on anything. And because of that, it, w it would continue to where it was irrecoverable. And, and I remember this because um, Lou, Lou up here, he's one of our, our pilots and Sven's up here too. And they'll be doing the simulators with us tomorrow morning. And we have two aircraft. So uh, don't, be, don't be mad because I have an aircraft. I actually have two. And um, <laughs> because we have so many staff and we're believing for an airline. Yeah, yeah amen. So, but we need, we, need, we need a bigger aircraft already because we have about 50 employees and we'd like to take them all. And so we have two aircraft. Sven sold me the one that Warrior Nose has and then he had another one. And um, he thought he had the better one because he had the new one, but he actually gave us the better one. So because he, he worked that one, to per it's perfect because he's a mechanic as well. And he got that thing and when he sold it, we both cried. I was so happy and he was crying because he, he, he didn't want to see her go. And then it ended up that God had it to where we all stay together anyway. So, But anyway, Lou, Lou talked to me and he said, listen, one of the things I'd like to see you do is do recovery training. And um, Lou, Lou is world known. Lou is world known in his, his, his areas. He actually, there are manuals that we have for our airplane that he wrote. Okay, but here's the thing that he, he, he talked me into going to this that all airline, all airline pilots should go to. And I think in Europe it's required, right? But in the United States, it's like, eh, you know, it's like, okay. And so pilots aren't, aren't able, they think they can recover when, when the airplane gets into irregular type of attitudes and, and situations. But it's, it's, it's a bear, it's a, like a bear, fighting a bear when you're eight miles up because the air is very thin. So he, he encouraged me to do this. Okay, when I went through this training, it was about four days, three or four days. As I'm doing this, I'm realizing this is exactly where the church is at. The church is not being trained to handle situations that are irregular. So when they happen, we automatically blame ourselves. We think, okay, what did we do wrong that this is happening? But did you ever think that God trusts you and that's why you're alive and living in California while you're here in this generation? Is that God knew that he could trust you? And you have to rise to the occasion, but you gotta have the tools so that it becomes second nature to react a certain way. It has to become second, it has to be your reaction it has to, you have to own it and you have to do it and you have to not think about it because that is already over with. You do that in the classroom. When you get into the airplane, there's no more thinking. You do it. And you only have a certain amount of time. So this is what happened and this is what I want to share tonight and then I want to go on. I've got lots of show and tell tonight. <laughs> this is, this is, he, he kept telling me you need to do this. And I knew, I, I knew in my heart that I was supposed to do it. And so I said, I'll do it. Can you get me the Lou discount? <laughs> and so he made a call and I got the Lou discount. Because it's, it's, it's kind of expensive, you know, and it's in a fighter jet. So I went and I did it and went through it every day, sometimes flying twice a day in a, in a fighter jet. And they put you in all this thing. And the last day, he, he said, we're going to do this. And he said, no, we had a briefing because you're wearing a parachute and the ejection seats, it's, an ex it's, it's, it's so that you have to bail out a different way. You don't use the ejection seat. It's pinned. Class it's classified as an experimental. Okay, so there's, you got to bail out. Okay, but we're not going to bail out because I'm just going to do this right and we're going to everything. But if, the, if the, this, is, this is a procedure. So I've, I've already skydived uh, you know, and I, I already skydive a lot, so I already knew how to do all that. It's easy, just pull this handle, you know. <laughs> but this is what happened on that last day. 
He said, no, we're going to go. And he says, if we go into this situation and we have done more than one and a half turns and I yell bail out, he said, I am not waiting for you. And when, and he said, I am not kidding you. We're going to do this today. And if it goes past this point, this is irrecoverable. We're leaving the airplane. And then I didn't know it, but I'm going to do this. There's a hood that goes over me. I'm going to do everything I just learned the last three days. Now I'm going to do it just by instruments. I'm not going to be allowed to look out. And then all of a sudden, sitting in a class doesn't seem like enough. Okay, but I did it, but I had all this blue sky and dirt. I knew the dirt was bad. That if it got bigger, that was bad. But if I saw blue, I'm good. You know, and I, and I could judge everything, but then they took that all away. Well, what has just happened on the earth is all that was taken away. But you don't, you don't, I don't know if you understand what has happened in the last three years. Everything was pulled away from you. So that the only thing left is it looks like the Antichrist wants to seat himself. But what was happening was you were being fed. You thought it was spiritual food. It was soul foods. You were, you were eating Louisiana food, soul food. No, you were, you, were, you were being ministered to in your soul. And they were calling it spiritual. So it was boosting you up. Pumping you up. You were pumped up. It would pump you up. Hans and Franz, you know. For what? So what happened was, is when it came time to react the correct way in the spirit, you could not finish your race in the spirit. You were going to finish it in the flesh. Because they took away your rights. They took away everything from you. And no one, no one could just stand up and react the correct way right away because there was so much deception already in place, but you didn't know it. But now you do know it. And even people that voted wrong know it. Whatever that wrong is, because I'm not going there. <laughs> but I guarantee you, if there's a Chinese balloon over my house, it's coming down. I'm not going to pray about it. I'm not going to do a study and get back with you. It would have never made it to the borders. And to save you all money, I would have shot it down with a BB guy. <laughs> save the Raptor F-22 missiles for another day. For something that actually means something. You're being played. You are all being played. And the church doesn't deserve that. Because Jesus Christ hung on a cross for us to rule and reign as kings and priests. And the only way is that someone's got to stand up that has nothing to win or lose in this situation. I have met Jesus. I have no, there's no other reward for me. You might think there is, there's not. I received my reward. He told me, well done. I, I, was, I was within three feet of him. I could have read his lips. I didn't even need to hear him say it. I could read his lips. He said, well done. There, there is no greater reward. I didn't see a mansion. I could care less. I don't care what's in my driveway. I don't care what's in my wallet. What's in your wallet? I don't care because it's none of that. Your reward is Jesus smiles at you and he says, well done. And there's nothing else. Nothing else. Okay. That's already happened to me. So I can't, I can't lose because I've already won. But it's not about winning or losing anymore. It's about trust. It's about the fact that on that last day, the briefing was stronger and different in my training. Otter, Captain Otter. He is an awesome man. I walked into that class. And he walks in there in his flight suit. 
And he looks at me, he goes, Kevin? I go, Otter? <laughs> he was my captain at Southwest Airlines. I served him coffee. <laughs> and he was a, a Navy pilot. And he had gotten the job with Southwest, and, and I knew him. And he goes, what are you doing here? I go, what are you doing here? No, no, it wasn't like that. This man, this man taught me, took me from where I was, and made me proactive. He gave me a frame of mind and then gave me experience that caused me to know that what pilots do in a certain circumstance is the actual opposite of what you should do to recover. Because it's all like people are trained to react a certain way. And what you'll find is, is that when people are flying airplanes, they automatically want to pull back. And when you pull back, that's what makes it worse. That's where it becomes irrecoverable. The thing you're supposed to do is unload. You're supposed to actually push the nose forward. That means if you're upside down, it means if you're sideways or the tail's first, instead of the pointy end first, you, you have to unload it. The actual opposite. And, and Lou knows this because he has to, to listen to all these recordings of pilots that die. And they're doing the exact opposite. Okay, now I say this to you to shake you up because this man is helping pilots everywhere. He's, he's, but he, he, he has to have everybody's support in order to get it out there that this training is necessary, okay? It's the same way with the church. I'm using this as a parallel. All of us need to know what to do in an in, in a, in a emergency. We need to know how to be a leader when no one else will be. You have to be able to act and become the leader, the designated leader. You don't wait for someone else to do it. You have to act, and you have to act without hesitation. That is everybody listening to me? Because the last time I'm going to say it, this is exactly where we're at right now. We're about to let it go too long. This country was the country that everybody wanted to go to. And now people want to leave. And it's us, it's our responsibility. Okay, so that was my introduction. We're good. All right. What, what time is it? I have the East Coast time. What, what time is it? Huh? It's quarter to nine? No way. How am I going to get through my notes? All right. Okay, well then I will do the abbreviated version, which is only three hours long. All right. Okay, so here's the, here's the, here's the uh, idea of the, the breakthrough to overthrow that we're going to talk about this weekend. Because the church has... has talked about breakthrough. And the only thing is, is that we go, we get a word, we get hands laid on us, we get delivered, then we need another word, then we need hands laid on us again, and then we need delivered again. <laughs> and then one of your relatives calls you, and then you need counseling, and then you need delivered. <laughs> and it just, it's a cycle. Because Evil spirits, familiar spirits, they don't have a plan B, so they got to control you by making you predictable. They have to be able to corral you. So when Jesus was speaking, when he came, he was, they even said it, no one speaks like him. And then the Pharisees said, everyone loves him. We're going to lose the people if we don't do something about this guy. That's what they said. Rome is going to come and take, a, take their, our nation from us. Well, they already had. It's like when Jesus said, talked about being in bondage. They said, we're in bondage to no one. And as they said that, behind them are Roman soldiers in their country. They're just like totally deceived in line. Their whole country was taken over. And Jesus never even addressed it. 
he addressed the religious people that were supposed to be the watchmen on the wall. They were supposed to be doing something about it. And they let it happen. I'm telling you the truth. You know, the church is supposed to be prospering because, because it, it causes us to overcome the world system of debt. So you don't want government cheese because it's made by craft. <laughs> and there's no cheese in it. It's just crafty. Okay? No, everything is set up so that you become dependent. That's the truth. Okay? So you need to think for yourself. You don't wait for someone else to recover. You do it. You, when you see something going on, you be the first responder. You, you be trained to know and discern scenarios. This is, this is what we don't do. We don't have scenario-based training like we should in the church. But you know what? If, you, if you're a professional in anything, every, everything is based on, you know, in the field that we're in, it's based on emergencies and it's things that don't actually happen a lot, thank God. But it's so inbred in you that you just automatically react to it and you just do your thing. That's being professional, but that's being mature. But the church, think about it. We've been taught to depend on everyone else. You know, I can't wait until May 8th because I can collect Social Security. I can't wait because I'm giving it to a single mom. And I don't know who it is yet, but I'm praying about it. But that checks, those checks are going, uh, is it every month? I don't know. I don't need it. What, what, is it every month? I don't know. What, what, I, I'm not, but I'm, I'm going I'm to write it to a single mom. I can't wait to take it. I'm not waiting for them to spend it where they don't have any. I'm just going to take it now. But I can't wait. Now, that's like, what, $1,600, $1,700? I don't know. Is it? I don't know. What is it? Yeah, no, I'm not waiting until I'm 67. Like, I, I think it's 20. Well, maybe, the, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, they upped it now because, you know, there's a spending spree right now in our government. So they're just giving everybody, you know. But anyway, bottom line is, I can't wait till May 8th so I can, I haven't told Kathy yet. I hope it's okay. I'm sorry. But, <laughs> It might be our purse money or something, you know. But no, I can't wait to give it to a single mom every month. It's every month, right? Hey, what a great deal. You know, I gave millions into it because I worked since I was 14. But, you know, they're gonna, they'll nickel and dime me. And I'll just live to be 130 and they'll have to keep paying me. But I'll get it back. I'll get it back. They were like, eat more craft macaroni and cheese, you know. They, well, I'll put them in the red. Well, they're already putting us in the red. So anyway, anyway, we need to be excited for the abundance so that we can help others. But then it's not just that. Then we are not dependent on the system. And that's what destroys countries. What are you all looking at? Listen, you want the power of God in your life. You've got to listen to what I'm saying. You've got to see that you've got to be ready to pull that ripcord. You've got to be ready to do your training. You've got to be ready to recover. You've got to be ready to act, not wait for someone else. There are so many people. There are so many people that, are in ministry, that are, were in ministry. They've been knocked out of the race. They have changed my life, but they, they, they got knocked out but they have helped me. There's so many people that gave me time and helped me, but they're no more. The power of God was so strong in their ministries. So I would rather just be a businessman that goes to different cities and talks about Jesus that if, that if that's what it takes, then be a minister. Because at least if I'm a businessman, I can have my own airplane. <laughs> I'm allowed. 
Now think about what I'm saying, because it's not a status symbol. It's point A to point B. It's not a status symbol. I still have my 2000 Pathfinder that I bought brand new on the showroom floor. It will not die. <laughs> I have, we have a Maxima that will not die. Those are our two cars. Why? Because I only am in it once a week. Why would I need to go two miles to my headquarters? Why would I need something else? I could walk there. I could take a golf cart there. But I can't take a golf cart here. I'm just asking you to think about this. Jesus didn't have the transportation that we have today, but yet he did what he could do. He, he, he walked 14 days with his disciples complaining to get to Jerusalem from Capernaum, where his headquarters was. And that's where Peter lived. That's where he lived. So from Capernaum to Jerusalem was 14-day walk. And he did it. He did it for us. It was a two-hour bus ride in air conditioning, and we got a meal when I did it. Now think about it. Nazareth was right, right over the, uh, the mountains there on the top of that mountain. It was a three-day journey. He had to do it. And when he got there, they rejected him. After a three-day walk. Okay? So we live in a different time. And because of that, I need you to reconsider the way you think. Is, is really... It's, does it really matter a thousand years from now what you drove? And what are you spending your time practicing on? What are you trying to get good at? Is it a backyard sport? Because you think you'll be one of those people that's going to get a million dollars a game? Do you know how many, how many people actually get that? Do you want to sit the rest of your life wishing you had done something else when you're older? Or do you just want to do that now? Do that one thing that God has called you to do. This is where we're at right now. Okay, so God has thoughts toward us. He thinks about us. And when he thinks about us, he literally is thinking about what was written about him, about you. He wrote before you were born. And there are scriptures that say this. This is why we have not progressed. This night right here is historical. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, it is a bright spot on the map in history. I'm not kidding you. I was sent here. I'm telling you. This is why we have not progressed. Is because we did not discern that God sits on his throne and thinks about us. We do not discern that Jesus saw a picture of our face while, we were, while he was hanging on the cross. And when you're sick, when he was chained and being beaten and his back was raw, it, he was thinking about your sickness. And he took stripes upon his back so that you would be healed. He hung on the cross so that you would be saved. But not only that, that you would be energized to actually do what was written about you. Energized by the Spirit of God. Okay, so everyone has their plan and purpose already intact before they're born. This is why we haven't progressed. Because the church has neglected the very thing that causes growth. The very thing that causes growth it's, you know it as change, but it's actually transformation. You're being transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your, your mind has to come up to speed with your spirit. Your spirit's born again. All things are new. The old has passed away. But now your mind has to be able to side with your spirit. And that was the church's job. And they failed. Because they pumped you up in your soul and called it spirit. So when it came time to be spiritual, what came out was soul. Now, I know I'm telling the truth 
but I might be standing alone right now. I know Julie's with me. I know Julie's with me. I know that she knows. I know that she knows what I'm saying. And if you listen in your spirit, this is, this is huge. What I'm telling you is, is we don't progress past the last generation that lived. That is terrible. Because everybody in heaven is cheering us on, not to do what they did, but to do more. To build upon it. No one in heaven, I was up there, no one in heaven thinks that you're going to replicate what they did. No one up there right now, they're all yelling and screaming right now, preach it, Kevin. Because they want you to excel past what they did, to add to it. I mean, these are the words that Paul uses, is adding to. The foundation was already laid. There is no mystery. It's already been revealed. It says that in Hebrews, you wouldn't believe the backlash I got a couple months ago when I announced, uh, all I did was teach a class on Hebrews, and I just got to the first chapter. I got 60 levels yet to go in Hebrews. It's the whole book. It's 60 levels. That's 60 times five sessions each is that course. I got through the first five verses where Paul, Paul wrote Hebrews, even though it doesn't say that. He hid himself because he was talking to the Hebrews. Paul wrote Hebrews. All right. He says, in times past, God spoke to us by the prophets. But now, in these days, he speaks to us through his son. Oh, that went over well. What about the prophets? Exactly. <laughs> what about them? What about a pastor? You, no one wants to be a pastor. No one wants to be an evangelist. No one wants to be a teacher. And no one wants to be a father. Paul said, you have many teachers, but you don't have many fathers. He said, I birthed you. I'm jealous over you. That is an apostle. That's a true father. That's someone I can follow. See, Jesus wasn't into drive-bys. Jesus was into discipleship and mentoring people, making it a permanent relationship to build upon. That is what Christianity is all about, replication, but exceeding the previous. So Jesus was working himself out of a job. He would say, how long will I be with you? Every time they would come to him for help, they're like, you're supposed to be soloing right now. Jesus like, I'm leaving the cockpit and you're going to solo. You're going to fly this on your own. The day is coming where you won't ask me for anything. You'll go to the Father yourself in my name. Mention my name and get the Lou discount. You, may, you mentioned Lou. No. He said he was wanting them to solo. So he's, his whole idea was to get them to do this on their own. Well, where do you hear that today? No, they want you to come back so they can charge you another $99 for the next level of deliverance. Well, when does it ever end? When does the devil just give up? Well, it should be right this weekend. I mean, he should literally just turn in his white flag and leave. I mean, I'm here now. This is, this is my city and this is my state. While I'm here, it's, I've been sent. So it's, it's, I'm under the authority of being sent. That's a little different than being went. I went through the door to get here. I went through Jesus to get here. He sent me here. He sent me with this word that will be historical. This video will play for 30 years. Even though you think he's coming next year, it'll play for 30 years. Why? Because you will do something about it tonight, and we will agree, and it will keep the Antichrist from being unseated. He, I mean, he will be unseated. He will, he, he will not be seated. Okay. So God has thoughts toward us. Everything was preempted and pre-planned. His whole plan was already pre-planned. The only thing he couldn't do was make you believe. He couldn't make you do anything. That is the image of God. That went over well when I announced that. The, the thing about the image of God is not glowing in the dark. That's not the image of God. The image of God is you can do whatever you want. And that is a liability when you're in a fallen world because you can't handle knowing good and evil. Only God can do that. That's why we should have never ate that fruit. We, were, we had a drive-by fruiting. 
We shouldn't have ate. Okay, now our eyes are open. We can't handle knowing evil. We were never made to know evil. Does everybody understand this? So in a world where we are together and we come into community together and we agree and we get our doctrine straight and we, we, we get rid of the ATM because God's not an ATM. And we get rid of the voting machines too. But we get rid of all these machines. Because we create a God that is not even the Jesus I met. I'm just telling you the truth. I'm telling you this as, a, as Kevin, not as a minister. I'm telling you, the only reason I'm doing this is because he asked me to do it. Not that I would ever want to do this. Because I don't want anything to do with ministry if it's what I'm seeing. And these are all my friends and I love them. But if it's not working, we need to, someone needs to say, you know what? Like if I was in that group in the, in, in the desert for 40 years, the first time we passed that 7-Eleven again, I say, you know what? We just passed that. We're, we're going in a circle. I, I would be the one, man. I would be the one. Like, you know what? We're lost. We're lost. I turn myself in. I mean, I'm, I'm rated as a captain. But I asked Lou, I asked Lou, when I fly with Lou and Sven, I go, does everything look good? As I'm set up and we're going to land, I'd be like, everything good, boss? I mean, I check in. Why? Because I'm never going to be that good that I can't be humble enough to ask for help. Do you get it? I, don't, I hope you did. Because that's what's happening right now. We're going to leave the Antichrist unseated in this generation. Paul said that the one who is holding him back from being seated is still present. Yeah. Talking about the church. He said he cannot be seated until the one who's holding him back is removed. That's us. So for 2,000 years, every generation has waited for the white horse and it never shows up. Because we are still on the earth to, to bring in the harvest. People need to hear the truth. The truth will sound so good these days because of all the fake. Okay, so now. Oh, wow. It's already nine. I have to quit. Let's just get into my first scripture here. Oh, we got all weekend, right? Well, I already burnt the fuel. Let's just, let's have a good time. Okay. So, God thinks about us, and this is the thing that has not been taught. God actually sits on a throne and thinks about all of us because the clocks are stopped. There's no time. There's, there's no limitations. He can sit and think, and a thousand years goes by. But to him, it's nothing. And he can think about every one of us. Jesus can come and visit people. He can turn back the clock he can visit you, turn back the clock, visit someone else. Everyone will say that Jesus visited him at a certain time, and they are absolutely all correct. But that will make your mind smoke. <laughs> but he can do whatever he wants. And he told me this. He told me this. The only reason I'm like this is because when he told me what he told me, I went back and investigated the scriptures. And I was an expert because I already had a degree in theology. And I found out that I, did, I knew nothing. This is what he told me. He said, Kevin, I could come and get you like I got Enoch. I could take you like he did. And he said, I can bring you back. And I can bring you back five minutes before I came and got you. And you'd have to watch the whole thing play out for five minutes again. And act like you didn't know what was going on. Because there is no limitations. And he might have like miscalculated when he placed you back in the timeline. You know what I mean? I'm just kidding. But <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that we got to get back to the simpl simplistic way of looking at the kingdom like children do. Yeah. We got to get back to that. And that is why we've been left out. Because we're not able to take it as a child like Jesus told us to. Right? Right? Yes. All right. So Jeremiah, he was a major prophet. Jeremiah lived before and kind of overlapped, according to some historians, with Daniel. But Daniel was reading the scroll of Jeremiah. That's my point. 
So Jeremiah had written some things about Israel. It was the whole chapter of 29. You just know 29 11, which I'm going to read. But he, wrote, he actually wrote a whole chapter, 29. It's not, it's not 29 11. So we know, for I know the thoughts I think toward you. He, the Lord's talking. Major prophet speaking. Not the ones that charge $99. Oh, you get breakfast too. I'm in a lot of trouble. Get the car. I'm in a lot of trouble. Okay, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Okay? This is all the character of God being revealed here. It says to give you a future and a hope. Okay? That's Jeremiah 29, 11. Okay. Now, if you read the whole chapter in a, in a, in a real quick in a real quick way because I want to go on. He said, there will come a time after the 70 years of captivity that you will call out to me and I will hear you. And he said, then I will bring you back into your land. So they weren't in their land in this prophecy, but I'm bringing you back into it because... I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and expected hope. And then plans for you to prosper is what um, the King James says. Okay? So Daniel's reading that. Everybody listening? And that's what's happening this weekend. You're actually reading about yourself. You're going to find yourself in prophecy. Daniel said, wait a minute, it's, it was actually, historians say it was 70 and a half years. It was six months past the 70 years. And Daniel said, my God, this is us. Is everybody listening? Yes. Okay, my question to you is, if, if he hadn't acted, if he hadn't saw that, because it was actually overdue, according to some, some uh, experts. I'm just a pert, but there was experts. <laughs> so I'm a pert. <laughs> there is a prophetic initiation that has to happen in the flesh by people. And we've all been depending upon the prophets to do this when it's supposed to be the body. Now, I just got unfriended. I mean, there's a thousand, a thousand people just went poof. <laughs> Why? Because no one wants to sit down and say it's not working. It's the body of Christ. Paul preached it 2,000 years ago. I haven't seen anything better than that. So I'm going to preach Paul. Paul was not in the superheroes. And he actually said, you know what? I'm not taking an offering. I'm, I work for a living. Oh, that'll go over well. Bing, bing, bing. How many thousand people I just lost right there? No, think about it. He said, I work for a living. That's what Paul said to the Thessalonians. You don't work, you don't eat. Why did he say that? Because they thought Jesus was coming back in a few months. So they had all quit their jobs. And Paul said, hey, this is what, if you read Thessalonians, it tells you when it will happen. He tells us exactly what it'll be like when Jesus comes back. And we are not even close. And it's going to be a stalemate, perceived stalemate, until the church hears this message and does something. It's the message that was preached in the first century in houses without Bethel music. And, and, and Bethel music's a blessing. So was Hillsong. So was Vineyard. Now there's Warrior Notes. <laughs> but you know what? At what point do we do what we're trained to do? When do we recover? When are we the leaders? Listen, I'm speaking this all in love, but I have to speak it. I already warned. I already warned my staff. I told them exactly what I'm going to be talking about this weekend. 
and no one else will talk about it. No one else will admit that we passed the 7-Eleven in the desert for 40 years. No one will say, you know what, we're lost. We're in a circle. Listen, men. It was 14 days journey to the promised land from Egypt. You want another round? No. Okay. So what we do is, this is the secret through, from breakthrough to overthrow. And then we can just go home. We don't even have to stay the weekend. No. <laughs> the, the secret to breakthrough to overthrow is, is that the devils do not want you to know that they do not have a plan B. If we are activated in this generation, there is nothing they can do. They will have to let the whole thing ride out. The power of God will hit the earth because the angels are already here. And, the, and, and miracles will start to happen. People will get saved. The harvest will come in. And Jesus Christ will come back in this generation. If not, it will be delayed. So that's what we're training the next generation. Because that's what everyone failed to do in the past. It's because Jesus has come back. When I got saved, when I got saved... I was told by my pastor that Jesus is coming back in my lifetime and that I probably, I'm going to Bible school, but I probably will not even finish in time to go out into the field. So I actually finished my bachelor's degree a year early to try to get out there to beat him, to beat Jesus coming back. <laughs> so here we are, here we are. <laughs> I have an iPhone 14 now. You know, they didn't even have an iPhone back then. They had a brick. They had a brick with an antenna on it. And it's kind of like a Glock, you know, when you run out of rounds, you just throw the gun at the person. It knocks them out. If you can't call somebody, you can just throw the becomes a weapon. That's a good 10 pounds. All right. Psalms 139, 16 and 17 says, For I, your eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. And you have questions about abortion? I know you don't. But it says that God's eyes saw my substance being yet unformed. Whoa. And in your book were all my days written and that were fashioned for me when yet none of them had come to pass. How precious are your thoughts, your thoughts. We're talking about thoughts tonight of God toward you. How precious are your thoughts to me, O oh God. How great is the sum of them. Okay? Matthew. This is Jesus. We're bringing Jesus into it. Can you believe it? We're going to bring Jesus into it. We're bringing the Bible into this message. Can you believe it? A Bible-filled message. Matthew 10, 29 to 31 says, Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? Not one of them falls to the ground apart from your heavenly Father's will. So I know that he knew about the balloon. But... <laughs> The very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore. You are of more value than many sparrows. That's from Jesus himself. If he was here tonight, that's what he would say to you. He would, he would, he would pick each of you out. He would stay all night. And he would grab, I know, because I met him. He would grab your cheek. He would grab your cheeks and he would tell you how valuable you are and how much, how deeply you are loved and appreciated. He would do that. He would hold your face and he would kiss you. And he would tell you, you don't need to do these things to seek your value. You're already valuable. Stop trying to prove yourself. He would talk like that because that's how he talked to me. And then he sent me back to this mess. <laughs> and it's like a carnival because no one received the, the, the email that I was God's favorite. Because I thought, I, I thought he was, he talked to me like I was his favorite. But he does that with everyone. Okay? Do you see now why the church has failed? The church has failed because we should be hot. 
And we should not be seeking value from the world. We should be setting the trend. We should be the one who's calling the shots. All right. Romans 8, 28 and 29. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, so he, he foreknew, he predestined to be conformed. Okay, so he foreknew and he predestined everyone, everyone, even the people in hell, to be conformed to his image. So people don't need to go to hell, but they do. He predestined it to not be that way. But everyone has free will. And so it is our job as the church to cause transformation to come. And the transformation comes when we all find out our value. That God thinks good thoughts toward us. So Jeremiah, Jeremiah was read by Daniel. And Daniel attached himself to God's perspective and predestined plan for Israel. And when he did, it was in Babylon. They were in captivity. They were, they were there 70 years, and 70 and a half years. He attached himself to the word of a prophet. And this is where knowledge has to become experiential. He did something about it. He saw himself in the Bible. He literally attached himself. We are the generation that Jeremiah has prophesied about. And God has good plans for us and expected and plans for us to prosper. And when he did that, he called a fast. Well, then you have angel visitation. And then the angels say, oh, listen, just so you know, there's a big war going on. And when you started to pray, it was 21 days ago. And we've been fighting ever since. We were actually sent the moment you prayed. And for 21 days, we have been fighting. And this is what will blow you away. Nobody catches this, but I was shown it on the other side. If you look at the order of the principalities that they fought, it was the next world powers that came up in order. You're all looking at me like, what? The angels were already fighting the next head honcho in civilizations. If you see what prince they were fighting, you look at the world powers. It was happening in the spirit before it manifested in the flesh. Okay, all right. The Lord's telling me to quit right now and to go on. Tell me to quit right now. I have, I have, a, I have pages. We haven't even got to the study guide yet. This is just a warm up. But I need to, I need to, I need the, the prop, because I was woken up, and the Lord said, do this. I go, you got to be kidding me. And you, you don't say it to the Lord, because he doesn't kid. All right, so he woke me up, and he, I, was, I, was, I was in my chair at 2 in the morning before I came here. And he said, you're going to buy a golf club set. I go, whatever for. Now, this is what he said to me. He said, Every house that you ever, ever had, you've lived on a golf course. Including right now. And it wasn't with ministry money, so please just relax. <laughs> breathe, breathe deep. <laughs> and I have never golfed on those golf courses. I'm on the ninth tee, and I've never golfed there. And they were giving me a great deal, you know, because we live there. We'll give you a cart. We'll give you like access. Well, I got access anyway. You're in my backyard every day. <laughs> you're gonna charge me for my backyard, okay? No, okay. So you're gonna give me. It's like okay, it was two thousand. Now it's gonna be a thousand a year, which is a great deal, I guess. And you're gonna get this and this, and you can play this much. And I'm like, when would I ever have time to golf? Okay, that's what I said. Okay, so the Lord said you've lived on three golf courses, and you've never golfed on anyone. And I can literally, in every one of them, walk out and start playing, and never have to pay. I just start on whatever hole our house was at. <laughs> In this case, I was halfway through, or I was on the ninth <laughs> tee, so. Listen to me. He wanted to know why. 
He wanted me to tell him why I never learned to golf. And I had to ask myself questions that I'm going to present to you tonight to show you what needs to change tonight. When I was in heaven, I saw that most conspiracy theories are true. That goes over well, so I'm not going to say that. It was so bad that I asked Jesus not to come back. He saw, I saw in a flash what's really going on. And, you know, I was like, my pastors say, you know, there's not a demon behind every tree. And I found out they were right because there's five demons behind every tree. <laughs> and the Lord showed me just to take out the tree that they're hiding behind. So that's what I do. I don't give them a place to stay. Okay. All right. So this is, all right. So this is, this, this goes for anything in your life. This goes for anything in your life. This is the world system in a way it's set up. They make, they call it, it's a backyard sport, but they call it, they call it professional, but it's entertainment. Okay. But they make it so impossible that only people that do it all the time can actually do good. So you have to do it all the time. All the time. It has become your life. Okay, so this, before I get into this, I'll tell you, I did the same thing with, with tennis that I did with golf. I watched Tiger Woods for years and years and years. Every Sunday, I'd come home from church and I would watch him. I didn't know why, but there's a golf course right outside. But I would never go out and play it. I would watch him. I watched him play because he was the best. He can't drive, but he can play golf. <laughs> He can play golf. And what I learned in heaven was, if you want to be good, you join yourself with people that are already there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I want to fly like an eagle. I don't have chicken friends. I don't have yard birds. Why do they even have wings? Oh, it's because of, there's buffalo wings, but buffaloes don't have wings. They're chicken wings but they're buffalo. Okay. Anyway, getting back to it. So we would watch Tiger play. I didn't have any experience. I have never golfed, but I watched Tiger play. And, and, and I did this with tennis. I watched Andre Agassi play. Didn't play tennis, but I watched him play. I watched the best play constantly. So when a friend of mine... He's, he's watching, Scott. He asked me to golf with him. And it's because he couldn't beat his friends, so he knew that he could probably beat me. So he's, I was gonna be his confidence builder. So he was going to, um, he wanted me to play so he can build his confidence up and beat me. Because I'd never played. But see, I had played for three years. I'm telling you. Tell you, if you catch the impartation, this is all impartation. It's better than a fire tunnel or a lane on a hands right now. What is in this room is being imparted to you, and, I'm, and it's free. And if you come back tomorrow, you'll get it some more. So I said yes. So in his mind, he's got to show me how to hold club. He's got to you know, tell me all this stuff, and so... I'm like, okay. So I went to make it short so you can get home and come back tomorrow. I beat him. <laughs> I'd never played, but I had played for three years because I'd never seen anything wrong done. I'd only watch the professionals do it, which they do it all the time. He was very upset. So he said, we're, we're going to go back and play again. So I, I went back. That was Monday. Tuesday, I went back and played, and I beat him again. And he broke his clubs and, wa and walked, I walked away from golf. I'm serious. I beat him twice. I have never played golf since then. The only time I ever played 
was those two times. Okay, so think about this. Now, what I'm telling you is, you gotta choose something that is written in your book and you gotta do it all the time and you have to get good at it, period. But let me tell you how this world system set up. You know how many fractions of 1% of the people actually get chosen to go on the GPA tour? I think it's GPA, right, isn't it? PGA. PGA, well, you know, one of those. <laughs> It could be CIA, I don't know. I thought it was the girls' golf, professional golf. GPA. Okay. That's like PhD stands for post hole digger. Listen to me. How many people actually excel to where it becomes an income? Okay, it's the same with every sport. The world system, what I saw, the world system is set up to set you up for failure. Okay, so I, see, I watch this every day. I watch people in my backyard. I am actually 99% afraid of them. <laughs> From the minute they pull up in their cart to the minute they go back in their cart where they're looking for their ball and I can see it's still on the tee because they missed it, but they don't know it. That is a problem. When I see how they drive the cart in my yard, I don't want to be around them. Okay, so people pay all this money to do this, and this is called relaxation. So, so you're given this, okay? So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna show this to you because I, I haven't done this since 19, I think it was, let's see. Let's see, we had met, right? We, we were married. We were married, it was like a year in, so it would be 94. This is 1994. I haven't touched one of these since then. Okay, but think about this. And you think about, you know, three, 400 yards. This goes into a hole, and you have this, like that's gonna help, but you have this, and you set it, and you're going to use the big boy first. Hopefully you hit it the first swing, and if no one's looking, you don't count it, right? Okay, so you're gonna put this into a hole 1,200 feet away. Starting with this. Now look at this, this is a shaft, okay? This is a big boy, it's a Bertha. All right, what, so, what, so what you're going to make sure that this angle right here, everything is gonna be right, and then when you go like this and you put it up like this, you're gonna make sure that when it comes down that that still is exactly straight so that it goes this way. And you've computed for the wind, right? Because the wind direction on a 1200 feet, it actually changes, I mean, with, with rifles, when, I, when I'm calculating for long shots, the, the, the wind correction is three different ways. The wind direction changes three different times. On a mile and a quarter, the, air, the, the, the rifle I have has hit a bullseye at a mile and a quarter. Seven wind changes. I'm talking like in the sight, you can see the arrows, one's this way, one's this way, and it's going out every thousand feet, it's changing. Okay, so you can do all that. You're sitting in your room watching them play and you wanna go buy a golf club set and you wanna buy a membership. And you're gonna go out and you're gonna hit a ball 1,200 feet and get it into a hole and under five tries and you're gonna calculate for the wind and you're gonna calculate for the angle. I'd rather just watch it on TV. <laughs> Why? Because I have a better chance I can spend my money elsewhere. So, oh, it's not that easy. This is just, this is step one. Okay, then there's like these numbers on the clubs. And so, oh, oh, you get another one. And this one's gonna help you go another 60 feet. 
but they make you think it'll go a thousand. But they, oh, there's more. Oh my gosh, there's a seven and a nine. Oh my gosh. And then there's, there's the putter. Oh, if you can make it to the green. Well, most of you paid putt-putt golf. You could win if you can get on the green. But how many of you can get on the green? So you can play putt-putt and win and beat all your buddies. But what about this? So I'm, I'm saying this because this is how the world sets you up for failure. They, it, you, you, you gotta be kidding me. No minister's gonna do this. But this is what it's come down to. You, I'm just telling you. The Lord woke me up and told me to tell you this and then he, t- he showed me a can of food. And he told me, you tell the Carl's, you buy this and then you sow this to someone. You don't go home with it, because I never want to play golf. <laughs> I'm going to sow it to somebody. You can, all, you can go and practice. But this Lord said, it would be better for people than to try to get a ball in a basket from half court, or to return a serve. You wouldn't believe it. When I watched Andre Agassi for three years, I went out to play. I stood there just like he did, and I rocked just like he did. And I had the same shoes. I had the same shoes he had on. And I just rocked like this. I'm not kidding you. I'm not kidding you. The guy moved to the other side, and he goes, you gotta move the other side. I go, I'm waiting for you to serve. He goes, I just did. I'm not kidding, he served. He served, and I didn't even. So then I said, wait a minute, no, no. I'm ready now. So I went and I put my racket out in the mark where I saw he was hitting, and it didn't hit it. Okay? I could not return the serve. My brother-in-law played for the Pittsburgh Steelers, number 73, Craig Wolfley. All, the whole team was at my sister's wedding when she got married to him. I was on the field. I could not catch a pass from Bradshaw. It would knock me out. I, the guys in the locker room, their shoulders were bigger than my head. The, they are Neanderthals. No, I'm serious. That male blunt, you remember male blunt? I mean, I can name all these guys. They could take me and pick me up by my head and set me. My brother-in-law could pick my sister up like this from her butt and just set up and carry, carry her out of a restaurant on his shoulder. But I couldn't, I couldn't catch a pass that I knew was coming to me. But yet I'll criticize a receiver in my chair with my snacks, my nachos. I'll criticize, I'll criticize a receiver got hit in the numbers with the ball and couldn't grab it. But you have no idea. Do you want me to go on? I can go through every sport. Because the bottom line is this, is everything is set up so that only people that are smart enough to practice all the time are the ones that succeed at it. So they play it as though it's a sport, but it's really a time consumer. Now, I know, I'm an, I, know, I know that you're all my friends, and that's why I can say this. I just want this to play for 30 years, because there'll come a day where everyone will see that I'm right. Because there is a point where Jesus showed me it would be better, and you tell the people in Carlsbad, it'd be better for them just to go and buy a can of food and give it to someone that, that can, will not eat today than to waste your time trying to be perfect at something that is literally impossible unless you do it eight hours a day. So why don't, why don't you, why don't you become a pilot? 23,000 seats vacated every year from now on. 23,000, what, what is it, is it, am I close? 23,000 last year, 23,000 not, will not be replaced. They're looking for children right now. Just kidding. <laughs> when I had got my commercial pilot's license and I went for an interview, I won't name the airline, but they said, if you were a woman, we could hire you right now with what you have. Well, I identify as a man. 
<laughs> so in the interview, I go, well, does it count if I like women? Okay, now think about that. I was denied a job at a major airline because they were in a lawsuit and they had to hire a bunch of women. And so now, I literally, in just a few months, I could go back to Southwest Airlines and get hired as a, as a pilot. And I was a flight attendant for them. Okay, so what I, th that's why we're doing the aviation thing. That's why we're doing what we're doing, is because I want to put children with, that's why I give away instruments, is I'm going to put the children on a path of something that will actually have eternal value to someone else. Is it, they've been captured by the world and presenting these things that really are not possible. You know, all, the, all the guys that are on Dude Perfect, they're all Christians. They were doing these trick shots. It's just a backyard thing they did. But they would just do these things until they got to where they could, could do it. Then they would film it. But see, now I get a notice that they have a new film out. And I mean, I mean, uh, that it's pretty close to instant. So by the time I view the video of their next thing that they've done, they already have a million views. Okay, this has will have ten thousand views tonight. By the end of the week, we'll have about thirty or forty thousand. Okay, but what I'm saying is those guys are good guys and they're doing it, but they, they do videos now where they sit and they say, just so you know, it took us three days to make that shot. And everybody's like, what? They go, three eight hour days. We filmed every one of them. They said one day they showed up in one of the, the really cool ones, they actually made it on the third shot and it was like early in the morning they had the rest of the day off because they had just planned on, okay, but see, you didn't know that. You're like, they're throwing bottles and you're like making Guinness World Book of Records, you know, and all that, you know what I mean? Is everybody following me? Yes. Yeah. It's deceptive. And now they're not doing it for deception, but what I'm telling to tell you is, is if you knew the, the truth about being a Christian, it's not easy. Living in this generation is slated to be harder than any other generation, and that's why we're here. But we have more teaching. We have more translations of the Bible. We have more songs on the blood of Jesus than any other generation. And all we need is one drop. <laughs> but we have all the songs, you know, and we sing them and we feel better. But do we really know how powerful that blood is? Well, if you ask a demon, they'll tell you how powerful it is. And they have told me. They have told me. The demons know. The demons know how powerful God's name is. They know how powerful the blood is. And they have told me, don't use that name. It's very powerful. When, the, when, the, when I use the blood of Jesus on them, I mean, 15 demons in a person were screaming at me like a choir. They were all screaming, the blood, it defeated us. Good to know. But I should know it. I shouldn't have the testimony of a demon. But the demons know how powerful what we've been given is. Does the church know? Okay? All right. So this, in just like anything else, in moderation, if that's if if, if you think you have a day to try to get a, a small ball in a hole twelve hundred feet away. And you think you can predict all, all the wind changes? I would rather you go to the airport and take lessons and let the computer on the airplane predict the wind changes and you just fly the thing. And actually take people somewhere and get a good job and fill a seat because we need pilots. I would rather put children on a path where we find out what their strengths are now and then we educate them in that wherever it is that they're supposed to go. And then the, the general education that we have is not sufficient to get a person on the right track at the right time. We have really not discerned that our children are much more smarter. And because of that, we've actually robbed 
ourselves and rob the next generation because we have not discerned that we're supposed to be mentoring our children, teaching them science, getting them out there and, and experiencing things. And so that's what we're going to do. On my watch, we're going to do that. So, so tonight, reconcile yourself to God and know that his thoughts toward you are good thoughts and that he has good plans for you, but you are in prophecy. You are there. You're in the Bible somewhere. You are part of God's plan, but no one stands up. It's always the prophets that they kill that somebody reads in the next generation and they celebrate them as heroes, but they kill them when they're alive. But they spoke what God's will was and it doesn't happen because people have to mix it with faith. You got to hear it and you got to obey it. That's why Jesus said, if you love me, obey me. That's his love language was obedience. That goes over well. And you won't last long with him in a, in, a, in a conversation if you're selfish. Because he's not like that. When you talk to him, his love language is show me that you love me. I've met him. He's not what you think. He doesn't have a favorite tea that he wants to sit and drink with you. He invested everything in you. And that's how I saw I would end this service tonight. You can come on up here and, and, and play, everybody. Um, is I saw the end of the service, and I said that. The Lord said, after the golf thing, you tell them, I invested everything in them. You tell them that. I am seated now waiting to get a return on my investment. So it's not about money anymore. It's about people and their lives. All of you are valuable. I came here because I love you, not I don't love what you have. I want you. I don't need money. Yeah, you want me to repeat it? Jesus told me, if you take care of my people, I will take care of you. Amen. Somebody already paid for this whole conference a month ago. In fact, paid for all the way up through, including the Gulf Stream 4 included everything up past Hawaii. It's already paid for. So I didn't come here for your money. Now you know that you all need to, to, to give. You know that that's part of the Bible. You know you need to give, but you need to give to God. And if it's, if it's to this ministry, then you do it. But I want partners. I want family. I don't, I don't want like a drive-by. I want partners. I want people that are called to just, let's get this done. Okay, so someone has already, now, who's going to do that? I mean, all my minister friends are like, oh, don't tell them that. You won't get any money. That's exactly right. And, 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 and Andrew watched it happen. Giving Tuesday. I, when I started the ministry a few years ago, I didn't know what Giving Tuesday was. And all the ministers were like, oh, I name them, you know who they are. Oh, you got to like get your graphics up and for Facebook. And you got to run your commercials because it's Giving Tuesday. I go, get, what's Giving Tuesday? I give every day. Like, like people have one day. Now, I guess it's like after Thanksgiving or something like that, like the Tuesday after like Thanksgiving or something like that. So I, I guess after your tryptophan wears out from your turkey. So all my friends, all my friends, are, uh, I mean, they're watching all these commercials. Like, you know, it's Giving Tuesday. You know, we, we could really use your funds. You know, we want you to give your best. And I'm like, I know these people. What are they doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm talking about you. What are you doing? I'm not talking as a minister to you. I'm talking about Ke I'm Kevin, wanting to know, like, why has it come to this? So I put out a graphic on Facebook, and I said, it's Giving Tuesday. Please do not give to Warrior Notes. I said, we don't need your money. Please give it to a single mom. Thank you. Our giving quadrupled. The comments were people of the world saying, no minister does this. Who is this guy? And it went viral. And I meant it. Please do not give. The reason why is, is that in this generation, everything's about money. But whatever happened to supernatural finances, whatever happened to like you being spoken to by God and you did something because the Spirit told you to do it and then He was right there. 
And, and, and every time that you need something, Paul said, because you laid it up, every opportunity that comes, you will have more than enough for yourself and for those to give. It, it, it's part of a hidden scripture in 2 Corinthians, it's chapter eight and nine, which is never preached on. It says, don't give out a compulsion. They took the offerings that never left the building. They were given to the poor. It never left the building, never went to the bank, never went to the treasure. It was laid at the feet of the apostles and given to the poor. It never left the building. So that's why we have reverse offerings. And that goes over well. We have the ushers come forward and we hand out money. Don't tempt me because I might just do it this weekend. And this is what we've done that. You wouldn't believe it. the ushers come forward and they have wads of money. And we give, it to, we give it out. Who needs money? Who needs gas money? Who needs food money? See, this is the way it was at the beginning. We can, we can do this. So the Lord said, I've invested in all of them. Tell them I've invested everything in them. They're valuable. Spend the rest of their days investing in what is inside of you. You're gifting. But the Lord told me that it would be better for you to just go get another can of food and give it to someone, then try to put a small bowl, ball in a hole 1,200 feet away. Because he told me to tell you that it's a sure thing if you help somebody out. If you give a can of food to somebody, it's a sure thing. I guarantee you the angels will report you to heaven. Amen? Yeah, do you have somebody? Joshua, 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 is your name Joshua? Come get your golf clubs. <laughs> okay, you take care of this. And there you go, buddy. Practice. Uh, I'll see you on TV someday. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so how many of you, how many of you, you realize that why you came here was for a certain reason, but God has a greater purpose for you. And what we need to do is get on the same page together. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to teach us the truth about everything. And like I spoke in Albuquerque last night, if you know the truth, you will be able to identify the fake. And, and you don't even focus on the fake you focus on the truth. So you came here tonight, but the real reason you came was for the impartation that you've received. You all can go. Every, anybody wants to go, go. I'm staying until I'm done. If you want to go, you go. I'll call Chick-fil-A and have them hold the, the drive through window open. <laughs> tell them you're on the way. I want to tell you something. What I saw, what has been happening in the last week, and I thought, I thought of Julie, because Julie was at IHOP in Kansas City. And she was not part of the PGA. She was... She was ministering, I would watch her. I always wanted to meet her. But she would just open her Bible and they would just like, they would like pray and sing and do music and they would have like, I don't know if it was 24 hours, but I guess it was, you know, but they would just, and, and she was part of that for years. And there was one lady that, this happened this week, is, is I started to go back to the time that I wrote that book, Agenda of Angels, and I'm not selling it, I'll give it to you. If you, if you can't buy it, I'm not saying this to get you to buy it. I'm not, I'm not a minister, <laughs> I'm Kevin. If you can't afford it, just take it. But that is one of the most supernatural books I ever wrote. It wasn't even planned. I had to call the publisher and insert it in, but this started to happen in this week when I knew I was coming here. The Lord started speaking to me about the ministry and the visitation of angels. And it's, he, he told me it's happening again on the earth right now. 
and, and that it's going to happen in California. And that California to the angels has never left God's, God's presence. California has never left God's presence. In, in the angels' mind, they were sent. Okay, so I started going back to this. So I want you to receive this impartation because every time I share about Enoch and about this, this every, every, every person has received some sort of impartation. And I'm not taking another offering either, so. I was writing a book. It was praying from the heavenly realms. And while I was writing in my chair, this, this breath came across, wind came across my office. I was, I was in there by myself, it was dark. I was on my laptop and I was writing from the heaven, praying from the heavenly realms. And I couldn't feel the seat anymore. I was standing on a mountaintop and I looked down and it was white with snow. There was rocks and I could see gray rock around, like darkened rock. But in this area on the top, it was all white. And I'm looking, at, honestly, just like you, I'm thinking I didn't have macaroni and cheese or watermelon or anything to, to like, it didn't, like this isn't induced by some mushroom or something like that that I got in a forest. This actually, like, it was really, I'm just being honest with you. I wish this happened all the time, but it doesn't. It, go, it goes years without happening. But I was somewhere else. I was on a mountaintop that had, I thought had snow on it, and I looked, and I saw a man in the center of this area that was flattened out on the, on the, it wasn't at the top of the mountain, but it was close to the top. There was like one peak that had like, uh, it was steep, but there's this one flat area. And I saw a man standing there, and there was, uh, I could see God talking to this man and I saw these beings that were surrounding the whole area and when I, I saw the ones that were close to me they were not like what you would call angels they were they were a different type of being they were elders there was 300 of them I didn't I don't know how I knew that but I knew there was that many they were like Melchizedek type people and they had a different embroidery on their chest they didn't have like what I saw angels have. They weren't warrior angels, they weren't angels, they didn't have wings, they, they were big, big, very, very royal, stately men. And they, they had a different, I've never seen this before. They were like priests, but they were much bigger. And Moses was talking to, to God and his face was glowing and God was glowing and they were talking together. And this was this, the, the elders were this protection. There wasn't 24, there was hundreds. And I kicked one of the rocks and that wasn't snow, that was white hot rocks. They were white hot. They were beyond the blackened burnt that Mount Sinai in Saudi Arabia today is, Jabal Allah's because Paul said that he went to the mountain of God and it was in Saudi Arabia, not the Sinai Peninsula. And so I know people that have been there. This mountain was on fire, but the, the rocks were white hot, it was holy. And I'm telling you, I was on holy ground. For how long it took, I don't know how long it took, all I know is when I came back to my chair, within 30 days, that book was done. And it was strictly given to me like I just wrote it, just wrote it out, chapter by chapter. If I told you how specific it was, it would freak everybody out, so I'm not gonna go there. But I literally was a scribe, and I literally wrote the book, Agenda of Angels. And when I was finished with it, I was in Tucson, Arizona, and I was speaking and I left my laptop there. When I came back to send it to the publisher, my laptop would not start up. So we went to the Apple store. Actually, I sent Rachel to the Apple store. They said, this has been struck by lightning. They said, it's completely fried. 
My heart just sank. And I thought, you know, this is just the devil. So the Lord said, ask, ask them to ask if the hard drive is salvageable, even if it, it's the imprint of it, can they get the, that out? And I said, tell him, no, I'm not an expert. I said, tell them, I'll buy a new laptop, but you put that hard drive in the new laptop. And the guy said, well, we'll test it. The, the, the hard drive was not touched. So they put it in a new laptop and sent it to me, and I, I, I emailed that to, the, to uh, Destiny Image, and they published it. Be it was the best book I've ever written, I think. Okay, in the last week, knowing I was coming here, that started happening to me again. I started to, to see my feet on those rocks, and I started to sense the angels around me. And, and the Lord, I go, Lord, it's happening, isn't it? I said, it's happening, it's here. And I, and I know that in this room right now, the angels are here. And I know that they've all been sent to minister for you. Minister for those who are gonna hear salvation. I know that because that's what they told me. So when I wrote Agenda of Angels, I was literally being told, this is what we do. This is our agenda. It's the agenda of God. It's not man's agenda. We hearken unto his voice. We do his bidding. And that's the whole conversation that went on for, for however long it was enough to fill that book, which is like 300 pages. Okay, I'm telling you this because the angels could care less about anything except God himself. Their mentality is they wanna please their commanding officer. So when you talk to them, if you're not talking as though you're with them, then they know that it's gonna be a hard, rocky road ahead for them with you. They know that, and that's essentially what the book's about. That they are looking for people that will work with them in the agenda of God. Okay, so Joshua made this mistake, so we shouldn't make this mistake. So in Joshua chapter five, Joshua is like, you know, he's, he's, he's on, He's on keto, he's been training, he's weight training. He's taking over for Moses, you know, and he's, he's got his sword and he's just whipping butt, going the whole way north to the Dead Sea, taking out every city. And he encounters an angel. And he goes, whose side are you on? You on our side or on the enemy's side? What did the angel say? Neither. But as the captains of, of the Lord's army, I have come. Okay, that is the truth about angels. They don't have an opinion. They don't watch ZNN. They have been sent and they hearken unto his voice, it says, they do his bidding. If you are talking God's agenda, if you're speaking what God is saying, they hear that and they can identify with that. If you're doing what they were sent to help you do, they identify with you and you'll feel the teaming up. If you wanna know what happened to Warrior Notes, how in three and a half, four years now, we have 32,000 students, in four years. I started my YouTube channel four years ago. It's one of the largest among all the ministries. That is not because I'm that good. I believe that the secret is the agenda of angels. I believe that they were sent to help us, but they only are gonna agree with us if we are agreeing with God, because we re literally are the ones that make the decisions on the earth, whether it's yay or nay, because God gave us the keys. I mean, if you want to bring the Bible into it. But see, the church is not taught that we have the keys. Jesus is seated and he's waiting for his enemies to become his footstool through the church. The church has the keys. He does not have the keys any longer. He literally is not going to do another thing about the devil until it's time to throw him into the lake of fire. That is the truth. Everything now is based on using his name, using his blood, and, and walking the earth and claiming it back. 
That's the bottom line. I will never back off this message. I will preach it from jail. Because Paul did. That's where you have to be. You have to be that committed. You have to be that seasoned to know that it's worth dying for. So if it's worth dying for, then you can live for it. And that's what I want you all to do. I want you to catch on fire. Because those angels actually turned and talked to me, or whatever they were. And they said, go back and tell the people that we're on the earth and we're ready. Go tell the people. This was back when I first started and I wrote that book. And it's happening again. When I go into prayer, my eyesight, it starts to focus on the other realm and I see Mount Sinai. And I see where God visited Moses and how he gave him the law. And now in the New Testament, we're under a, a better covenant with better promises. And that fulfilling the law, fulfilling the law is this. And this is what the church has to preach from now on, and we're not. Fulfilling the law, Jesus said, it can be summed up in these things. He said, he said love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love the na your neighbor as yourself. If you do these things, you fulfill all the law. Okay, and it just kind of like runs off us like rain. But Jesus told me to release this. He said, I said, love your neighbor as yourself. And what I realized was, I can't love someone else if I don't love myself. And I can't love myself if I don't know that I'm, I'm loved by a, a God who created me. If I know that I'm loved by my Father in heaven and that he knows every sparrow that has fallen and he surely knows about me, then why would I want to manipulate people to get something from them? What has this, what has it turned into? I'm done with being manipulated, aren't you? Yeah. Ministry is about giving and receiving. And Jesus said, tell the people that they are to know their love so that they can love themselves. You got to forgive yourself. You got to love yourself. You love your neighbor as yourself. It doesn't say you can't love yourself. It says don't worship yourself. Don't worship anyone or anything except the Lord your God only. This is what it felt like. What I just told you right now is how it felt to be on Mount Sinai. It also felt that way when I was with Jesus on the sapphire floor in heaven in the throne room. When I was standing on that and he said, Enoch qualifies to walk on this. This is by invitation only. Those who walk on the sapphire floor were those who walked in the fear of me and they walked in a relationship with me and I knew them. Enoch walked, can walk on this sapphire floor and I said, can I come to you? And he said, come, because you fear me. Well, that, that's like almost a new doctrine these days, the fear of the Lord, you know? But you know what? Like my dad said, you need the slack jerked out of you. He had to put his foot down. He was a naval officer. And you heard the saying, right? You know, all of us that grew up like that, there was only two ways to lose your front teeth. Get in a fight or talk back to your parents. I'm telling you we're there. Don't wait for it. You don't need someone to come by to your town and prophesy. You don't need a breakfast. You need, you need to sit down at the table of the Lord and eat everything on the table. Everything, okay? Will you do that? Because the Lord set a table for us in the presence of our enemies. Actually, in Aramaic, it says, set in honor of us in the presence of our enemies. He honors us in the presence of our enemies. That's what God's saying tonight. Are you ready? Because you've been mocked, 
you've been lied to, you've been deceived, stolen from. You've not been taken seriously. Listen, if you talk to anybody at work where I worked, I would sit and talk and no one would listen to me at times. I would actually, as a joke, I'd be sitting there talking about something and I'd say, you know, and they, nobody's listening. And I said, well, yeah, I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna go to the moon. I'll be back for the next flight. I'm gonna have some space sticks. I'm gonna drink some Tang and I'll be back for the next flight. And they're like, what would you just say? They weren't even listening to me. So if you feel like people are ignoring you, just, just know, I don't know how a thousand people show up to listen to me. Because no one would listen to me and unless the anointing of God was on me and I started speaking from the Spirit. And then everybody had teary eyes and everybody wanted to hear what I had to say. But it wasn't me speaking. How about all of us warriors just get into that mode where we speak by the Spirit? Amen. We just speak by the Spirit and we start prophesying. Whoa, do you feel that? You can't make this stuff up. Did you feel that? That was a wave that just crashed over this place. A wave of the Spirit. You can leave anytime you want. I'm not going to disobey the Lord. I flew from the East Coast to get here. I ain't going until I'm done. You, you all, there is no one behind you. If you look, there's no one behind you, you're it. All of you ministers, all you ministers that stuck in here, so I wouldn't see you. All the ministers that are watching, we need you on fire. We need every five-fold minister of the church to stand up in the fire and speak from the fire. We need all of you. Listen, this is what the Lord told me to say. This is to get rid of all my friends. He said, if preaching the truth causes you to lose your church, then go get a job. That's what the Spirit told me to say. If, 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 if preaching the truth causes you to lose your ministry, then just go get a job and keep letting it fly on YouTube. That's what He told me to say. Are you, are you tied? What are you afraid of? Jesus let it fly, and they killed him in three and a half years. I've already exceeded his length of ministry. I love you all. The Spirit's released me, so I'm gonna like walk out gently. <laughs> you all worship. The Lord said from now on, 2023, there will be a response by worshiping God after the message. This will be the longest message for this weekend. And it's, it was actually the equivalent of three. And you know, the Spirit of the Lord said to do that because He told me, He said, do what I did tonight because there are some who will not be able to come tomorrow. He told me to switch everything around. So I actually switched everything around and did the messages because there were certain people that just, He said, they've got to hear this, but they'll only be here tonight. So he's, I switched everything around. I just want you to tell you, that's how it works around here. That's how I'm training all the students to be like this. If you gotta go buy a set of golf clubs just to get your point across, that's what you do. If you have story time for three hours, if that's what it takes, if that's what it takes to get you into the destiny that God's called you, then that's the way it'll be. That's the way it'll be. If I have to hand out money, that's what we'll do tomorrow. I will hand out money. I will do whatever it takes because you all have to do this. Oh, I'm serious. Every service, I'm waiting for God to tell me to pay somebody's car off. I'm a flight attendant that became a captain. And I want, I can't wait to give my social security check away. It's only a couple months away. I can't wait to sign it over. I can't wait. But you know, there was a day where I didn't even know if I was gonna have enough for retirement. And thanks be to God through Jesus Christ, because it wasn't our government or my airline that would have helped me. Release it. Ryan, get up here. 
writing, the Spirit of the Lord, get up here, tell these people, he's, he's a pastor. All, all the people that work for me, they're pastors, they have churches. Tell them, tell them that you, I, when I first met Ryan, he produced my first show for Sid Roth. I went to his church, he had like 25 people in his house. Now he's got like two or three storefronts. He's got almost 200 people in his church. They got a coffee shop. They have a food pantry. He's seen his people, he's seen them activated just because I came to Sid Roth and we hooked up. And now he works for me. He's being trained to do what he's doing. All these men and women that work for me, they've all been trained in other places to come and do this. Tell them, Ryan, just activate. I'm, I, don't, I feel like I'm done. All of you need to hear this. He's seen it. We have people, we just started Warrior Fellowships in Cities with like 10 people. They, they, have, they have to have a hotel room. They have over 100 people in just a matter of two months. All we're doing is meeting people's needs. If people don't want to go to church, that's their choice. God's will is the church. But if it's not working, like it, if there's a cycle, then we need to create a place where you all can meet and feel safe and learn the word of God and pray for each other and love on each other and receive love and prayer and, and feel like we're part of, of something great because we are. Amen. Go ahead, Ryan. Just real quick, when uh, Kevin would first come to the house, my mom was his lead intercessor at the time, uh, was a seer, a prophetess, and, and when he came, he came, uh, there's a, a bunch of angels that came with him. When Kevin left, the angels stayed, and they've never left Antioch, our church. The same thing is here tonight. Because Kevin and Kathy were obedient to the Lord, angels came to this place tonight, and they're gonna stay with you now. They're gonna be with you, they're gonna help you. That agenda of angels is gonna be with you, working with you, with signs and wonders following. Amen. Rusty, Rusty over there, 30 years with the Concord Police. He was at that meeting. He came up, he wanted to be filled with the Spirit. Do you know how hard it is to get a police officer filled with the Spirit? <laughs> I laid hands on him and prayed for him and he received. And I knew that one day he would work for me. And now there he is. Kathy and I, Kathy and I, we met Sven. How we met Sven was, we, the Lord told us what aircraft was ours, so we just said, we'll take it. This guy delivers it. It's his. So he sells it to us. And we're sitting there talking to him about what God's done in the lives. And he's like, can you sign my book? Can you sign the book? I said, sure. And he's never left. We can't get rid of him. And so now he runs our aviation department. He knows our airplane better than anybody. Lou, he said, there's a guy named Lou. He's a big teddy bear. He's going to fly with you too. Lou met me. He goes, you want to be a captain? I said, yeah. He says, well, my sole goal is to make you a captain. And we went from nothing to being a captain in less than a year. I could go through every one of my employees like that. But it all started with me and Kathy fasting and praying in our house, wearing our carpet out in every house we've had, wearing our carpet out, just praying in tongues, no engagements, no pulpit, no 501c3, nothing, no invitations. But we stayed in there. We learned to pray from the fire. So she's gonna pray from the fire right now. The presence in here is so strong. So um, just reverence the presence of the Lord. I feel like we should all stand, but stay in the presence. It's holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's in our midst. 
and he wants us to resonate with his presence. He wants us to continue. He wants a continuance. I keep hearing that word continuance. Like what we began, he wants it to continue. What those who went before us began, he wants it to continue. So what we need to do is in the fear of the Lord, I want us to either, you can stand, you can bow, or if you can, like, like if this really was, God is here, his presence is here. If you were gonna come before the throne of God tonight, how would you come? If you can come up to this altar, like you would come to the throne of the living God, then please come, but do not disturb the presence because he is going to do a mighty work in our lives, in this place, in this nation, and in the world. So if that's you and you can come up here like you're coming before the throne of the living God, please come up. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your presence in this place, Lord. We reverence your presence. We resonate. We resonate. We reverberate with your spirit, the spirit of living God. Shinakita la unda. Let the Spirit pray through you in the fear of the Lord. Mashene kitana veshe, lavino tomor ramase, wikiti neapato, rembe stanoto, makila matila mas telepene, teranikane anutanas, teranikani senikianoto, hora hashe. Hora Hashe. Hallelujah. Halakula Mande. Ila Mande Leminda. Ula Mande Leminde. Ula Minda Leminde. Ila Manda Lamaso. Ila Manda Lamasto. Hallelujah. 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 Shukur Rashete. Ora Vashoto. Ora Shekitave. Ora Shekitave. Ora Shekivate. Ora Shekivate. Thank you, Lord, for the angels in this place. Thank you, Lord, for the angels in this place. Shalakitanashe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb, to the great I Am. Glory to the Lamb, to the great I Am. The kutabase tese, dabata busa tabashe. Torra baba buburra baba baso, orra baba baba so, sorra visa te keshe, sorra nehianate. Urre eshe. Uravare veriesto, shukur reveshe, shukur ravashe. Just the worship, I just feel like y'all with the worship, just let him, let those. Reverberations of heaven flow through you, frashenete the fire, shavene kitai, urashe. the team is worshiping if y'all you worship with them and let the Holy Spirit sing through you let him resonate let the sounds of heaven resound in this place
God is doing a deep work, and he's not in a hurry. He's doing a deep work. denied of his inheritance. The Lord will not be denied. Yutave shave shator rase. is sealing in his word everything that you've heard tonight he's sealing it in in his presence here it's being sealed in your hearts hallelujah hallelujah Father. Thank you, Father. If y'all if you are getting something, just, you know. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We're just, we don't have to be in a hurry. But the worship, te the worship team is going to release what the Lord gives them. Every, every one of us has a supply of the Spirit. And as you're just yielding to the Lord, He's doing a great work in us and through us. He's doing a great work. And I just thank you all for your hunger and for allowing the Lord to flow in you and through you. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We just seal this night in the blood, and we just pray for the, the rest of the songs and the sounds you want released through the t worship team and through your people here, Lord. We just commit the completion of this evening to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We're just going to continue to worship, and if you do have to leave, just stay quiet so that those that are still here can finish out. So those that are still here can finish out what the Lord has for them. So we reverence your presence, Lord. We reverence your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the sounds of heaven. The sounds of heaven coming forth. Thank you, Lord.
everything And Jesus, I love Jesus, you I love Jesus, you. I want Jesus, you I want Jesus, you. I need Jesus, you I need More than anything more. every day Jesus, I love Jesus, you I love Jesus, I want
presence in this place Lord we thank you Lord that it will stick to us and carry out with us wherever we go by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus name amen amen we want to get you home try to be here by nine in the morning if you're coming back God bless you we'll see you soon